He's a maniac. Yes. I hate this song. Absolutely. I agree. They play that song at Dolphin Games all the time. Yeah, they used they really. to. Well, that's another reason not to go, I guess. And those uh, silly cheerleaders are Although out there. Although those two of them are Dolphins, man. They're on the way. Oh, yeah. I had a guy call earlier today. He's expecting to see the Dolphins and Denver in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Against each other again. Right. No question about it. By the way, what happened in that Kansas City-Denver game last night? I didn't watch that. Boy, Kansas City, Denver just crushed them. It, you Denver know, it, crushed Kansas City? Yeah. The Denver looked like a different team from the one that was here. <laughs> oh. Boy, when I said parody, man, the league is just uh, mostly just bottom feeders, just trash. You know, I was saying that maybe Ronnie Brown's game against Denver wasn't so bad because he didn't run very well against them. Nobody's run well against them. Their run defense is very good. Yeah. But they suck. Jake Plummer's a joke, but nevertheless, he that's wasn't last I'm night. Glad I, I'm glad I didn't watch that. He uh, he wasn't last night. I'm sure glad you didn't, I didn't have to watch, watch much of that game last night. It was over in the first quarter. Didn't watch the Marlin game either last night. Didn't miss any Marlin runs, I guess. Didn't miss AJ Burnett getting sent home. Didn't miss Jack McKeon saying, "I'm all finished. I'm done." Jack was on with us today. Yeah. What did he say? Is he done? Uh, he says he likes managing. Oh. And what, the last thing he said to me, I said it was good having you with us this year, Jack. I enjoy talking baseball with you, which I do. And Jack said, uh, hopefully we can do it again next year. Well, I'll be damned. But I don't know. He hasn't decided yet, and he said he still might change his mind. But they might make their minds up for, his mind up for him. Yeah, he only turns 95 next year. He's just uh, like <laughs> Casey Stengel, a spring chicken. Well, he wants now, to be this, uh, the second oldest guy ever to manage. If you manage really? one more year, you can do that. I'll be damned. Well, if he doesn't do it, you and I can go into managing. Anyway, That's right. A, We're old um, enough. A movie, if it comes on your TV, do not watch it under any circumstances. There was a movie a couple of weeks ago I got sucked into watching because it said it had four stars. Yeah. Garden State. Piece of crap. Oh, I hear that's awful. And last night I watched a movie that had three stars on the bottom uh, thing, and I cut over from the beginning, unfortunately. It was the worst, most depressing piece of turd I've ever seen called The Anniversary Party. You know, Garden State is about where I grew up. It's, it, yeah. They filmed it in, this, in the town where I grew up. Cherry Hill. I thought Garden... No, that's Garden State Racetrack. <laughs> right. Well, that's all I know. That's what very I good. <laughs> I know what you're laughing about. I've been there, mister. I've been there, too. Yeah. I went there when I was in high school. We used to go opening day. Yeah. I'm talking about for a harness racing. And they, they, yeah, I know. They built, it, they built it with the idea of putting casinos in there because they thought that they were going to get the permit to put casinos outside of Atlantic City. And so the interior was just really glitzy and beautiful and uh, never materialized. And, of course, they went out of business. Yeah. yeah. Finito. No, Garden but uh, State. Garden State, I think, was uh, filmed in uh, North Jersey, where I, the area where I grew up. And North so every, Jersey? Yeah, so people have told me, you got to go see it. It's about your hometown. Now, is North Jersey considered like a T-neck or Tenafly? Or yeah, around there. That, uh, yeah. yeah. My roommate from college was from Tenafly. I know where Jersey. that is. What a horrible place. I lived in South Orange. Oh, boy. Anyway, Jennifer Jason Lee, Alan Cumming, and uh, a bunch of other big names, actually, Jane Addams, John C. Riley, Parker Posey. Yeah. Uh, they're all in this movie, Anniversary Party. Do not watch it. It's highly touted. A lot of stars. I'm reading the reviews online. I wonder if these people are taking the same ecstasy that the people in the movie were taking or on some other kind of drug because it was just putrid. Just putrid. And by the way, anybody out there, if it comes on your cable, uh, the dog comes back home at the end and goes inside. Okay, that's it. That's the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the end. Yo, that tells me everything I need to know about that movie. The dog, dog comes the home word, in the man. end. Dog is uh, the word for that movie. Just a piece of crap. Oh, and the guy, the husband, uh, his uh, gets a call from dad and his sister that he wasn't returning her phone calls, committed suicide, and he's upset. That's it. Okay. And they're all stoned off their ass on ecstasy, and they're all like uh, trying to drown in the pool, and it's just, uh, oh man, so bad. There are no words to describe it, and, and it, it's highly touted. Highly touted. I just don't get it. So Denver beat the crap out of Kansas City. Well, Kansas City must be uh, really suspect then. Yeah, they looked bad last night. Their quarterback was bad. They couldn't Frank run Green the ball. Was bad? Yeah, horrible. Oh, he looks good to me. <laughs> and they couldn't throw the ball. They couldn't yeah. run the ball. Rather, they were just okay, bad. You can answer my. You can put one on our poll today. My poll question is sports oriented. Okay. Never did this one before. We did. Who's your all-time favorite South Florida athlete? But this is just uh, in general, generic. Who's your all-time favorite athlete? Wow. Now, let me give you what we got so far, okay, out of the first uh, 210 votes. Danny Boy, Dan Marino, 67, which makes sense in South Florida. I hate sports, 65. That's our hostile people out there. Mickey Mantle, 18. Willie Mays, 13. Babe Ruth, 10. Bobby Orr, 10. Wayne Gretzky, 6. Sh uh, Sh uh, Shaq, 5. Say it again. Shaq! Yeah. Oh. 
Bob Greasy, five. Mario Lemieux, four. Tiger Woods, three. And I put him on there even though I don't consider golf to be a sport, but never it's a game. Tom Brady, three. And Johnny Bauer, uh, one. That was my vote. My favorite athlete is Pat Valenzuela. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. Well, at least you didn't say Gary Bean, anyway. You know what's interesting? <laughs> you know, give, give me a real name for yeah, that. You know, what, uh, you know something? Uh, it was it, it, As soon as you said it, the first two names flashed in, in front of me. One was... Magic Johnson. I always enjoyed watching okay. him play basketball. All right. Uh, and the other name was Mantle, and that was who I liked growing up. Yeah. You know, oh, I did too. Mantle was my favorite ball player. No, my favorite player was Hank Bauer. Same team, but yeah, uh, number nine. Yeah. Oh, Hank Bauer was great. Yep. The general. He was a hard-nosed, uh, clutch, real clutch Tough guy. Yeah, he was great and tremendous fielder. Yeah, Boy, he had great, a great arm. arm. Oh, phenomenal. He so was the guy. He was the guy who. Uh, was uh, remember they had the brawl at the Copacabana? Yeah. And Bauer was was there, and of all the guys who were involved in that, Bill, there was Billy Martin, Mantle, a couple other people. Of all the guys I wouldn't want to tangle with, Bauer would be the guy. Yeah, he was a uh, Marine. Yep. Real hard nosed, tough ass guy. But uh, but so Don Adams died. I, I yeah. don't know if you like Don Adams. I actually, I hate to say it, but I really didn't care for him. Would you believe? That's what, what, he's, what? That was, uh, oh, that what was he the was line? known for. Would you oh. believe? Yeah, I didn't like that show. I didn't know that Mel Brooks wrote that show. Did he really? That was in the obit today. That's what convinced him to play the role. That Mel, Mel Brooks is still alive, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, and his wife and passed married Anne Bancroft. Yeah, she died. Anne Bancroft died? Yeah. No. A few months ago. Did she really? Yeah. So many people die, and I can't keep track anymore. Anne Bancroft died? Yes. Who not only uh, starred in, but also wrote the uh, screenplay for Fatso. Did you see Fatso? Yeah, sure. What a great movie. It was classic. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> in fact, we had the guy. What, what was the guy's name, George? Richie not Carey. Sonny Lapalada, the other guy. Richie Get Karen. the honey, Julia. <laughs> what was his name? Richie Karen. Richie Karen. He called yeah, on the yeah. show one time where somebody had him call in. Yeah. Well, that was a classic. Yeah. But, yeah, Mel, Brooks, on... but Mel Brooks created Get Smart uh, with somebody else who was a very famous comedian. Yeah. I don't remember who that was. Well, we'll find out. Poopy Compo or somebody like that. Soupy Sales. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's about it. Don't go to New Orleans, by the way. The air is unfit to breathe and the water is unfit to drink and the uh, all kinds of stuff going on. Okay. I'm going it's to New York here. Thursday. It sounds like there's not much better there. Why is that? The air is not fit to breathe and the water is not fit to drink. Oh, well, we know that. They're, seriously, I said that to George before the show this morning, that there are a lot of uh, people in New York going to wind up dying from emphysema and other uh uh, bronchial diseases because of 9-11, but nobody wants to talk about that. Just, you know, keep it quiet because it's a lot of lawsuits will be coming. Okay. Now, are you doing a show from uh, the fan? No, uh, I'm doing a show from a place that's not too far from Belmont because that's where I have to oh, be I see. Friday. That makes sense. Uh, you probably have a runner to take the bets. <laughs> you don't have to do that. I could uh, make the bets myself and watch it on TVG. There you go. But, uh, no, I, there's a, a guy up there who has a studio in his house right near Garden City. Ah, but now what a concept, having a studio right in your house. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I always go there, and then Monday I'll be doing a show from Charlotte from a station. And then uh, Tuesday I'm not going to work. <laughs> well, what does that mean? It's uh, Jewish New Year. You know how it's religious I am. It's Shona is Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, I don't have next week's uh, schedule here, so I don't I don't know from that. And uh, Yom Kippur is the following Thursday. Well, good. I'm going to become very Jewish this year, I think. I'm going to start taking the Jew holidays off. Why not? Sure. What do you think? I, w <laughs> I would. Huh? Why not? Yeah. I'll sue their ass for uh, religious uh, discrimination if That's they right. start messing with me. Hey, I but work I, on I, Christmas. I huh? I always work on Christmas. So yeah, I'll make up for work those days. I'll work on the uh, Goisha holidays. That's the way to do it. Yeah. They have far fewer than we have. You know, at KET, speaking of our conversation yesterday about Sid Levin, it was really very amusing because every Jewish holiday, uh, in fact, what the heck was the receptionist? Laverne, was that her name? Was the uh, black receptionist girl there? Very nice uh, young lady. And everybody, including her, became Jewish on the Jewish holidays. The place was a ghost town. Yeah. Only those of us on the air were working. Uh, nobody else there. Well, I have this game to cover Monday night in Charlotte, and then I'm going to fly back Tuesday. Well, that's depressing about the Denver uh, beating the crap out of Kansas City. That means that the whole league is just garbage, which is good news for me because it means the Patriots are probably going to win. Although without Rodney Harrison, I see he's out for the I think uh, that's, season that, now. I think that's oh, important. Boy. That's really uh, important. That's crucial, man. He's yeah. great. Yes, he is. Or he was great. Career-threatening, they said, this injury. Yeah. It's not a, good. Not good. Well, we want to give everybody else a fighting chance.
Yeah, now everybody thinks the Dolphins are waltz in because everybody's getting hurt. Oh, yeah, you know, Jets are without. Jets well, have no quarterbacks. Ben Roethlisberger said that Tom Brady is by far the best quarterback in the league. Not just the best quarterback, but he says by far the best. I had a question this morning asking me if Brady, if his career ended today, would he be in the Hall of Fame? And I say yes. I would agree. I mean, Sayers played five years and went in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. But uh, this guy how many, is, how many Super Bowls did he win, or how many championships did he win? He didn't. No. But in this case, you know, you look at Brady, not just the... Yeah, how, well, how, many, uh, how many Super all about Bowls the, did Dan Marino win? It's all about the championships. I mean, Danny just went in. How many did he win? Oh! That's right, Henry. But he broke all the records. Well, yeah, I understand that. But, no, I'm, I'm not doubting he belongs in there, but I'm just saying, yeah. when he wins three... Yeah, it's like Montana. So. Well, nobody wants another Joe. On that note, <laughs> did you say nobody wants another Mo? <laughs> there you go. Again, do, 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 do. starting up with the Mo Meister, I get all the grief. Do, 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 do. And you're the Ojean Provocateur. Do, 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 do. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, have a great day and don't lose too much. Yeah, you too. See you tomorrow. Media is sick and needs help badly. Michael Jordan, how could we have forgotten that? That's my bad. And yeah, I already on. put that on there when I put on Magic. And Magic Johnson. And, of course, Bobby Wanzer, all the other basketball greats, Dolph Shays, Bob Pettit. Anyway, uh, it's 10-13 already. 10-13, that means we got to do wow. the break. Boy, that was a long crossover with a humper there, but we had a reminisce about Don uh, Johnson. Uh, what's his name? Don, uh, I can't believe Ann Bancroft died. Nobody told me. Did we talk about that? Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, it, 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 the older you get, the harder it is to keep track of all the dead people. You well, know? I know. I'm sure you become the next one. It's, it's hard to keep track. Then, then it's easy at that point. And Bancroft died. Holy moly. Best known for saying... You ain't the only! Oh, my God. Now, let's see. There's a movie that Josh didn't see, Fatso. No, I didn't. Now, you think he'd enjoy that? I don't, I don't know. I love food. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I think you'd like it. Don't, I don't don't go buy it, though. Wait for it to come on cable and tell him to watch it for free. Oh, wait, wait for it to come on. He's been on cable for years. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to buy him no more movies. He's just, no. uh, you know. It'll in fact, I'm going to get him the anniversary party. He'd probably like that. Demand. I'm telling you, I'm going to save you yeah. folks two and a half hours of the worst wasted time of your life. You'd have a better time just picking your nose and lint hair out of your toes or something. I'm serious. The worst piece of garbage. The anniversary party. Three stars, my ass. Oh, God. And Jane Addams, who I thought was very, very funny in Happiness, and she played basically the same kind of character here, although she was right. married to the guy that played the uh, loser cop in, um, uh, what you call it, Magnolia. Magnolia. Right. But, uh, and she was very funny for like about uh, half an hour. And then it's, it, it was also morbid and depressing. And it just, oh, man. If you're in a really sour mood and you want to like get suicidal, want to kill yourself, be sure and watch the anniversary party. It's oh. guaranteed to put you over the edge. No, thanks. I don't need to see And the dog comes that. back in the end, by the way. Oh, he runs good, into the house good. and the movie's over. 10:15 at 5:60 WQM. How did? 
Vegas season premiere is here. It's about time. With his lowest approval rating ever, George Bush stars in... Loser. Loser. The Biggest Loser. Well, I, I, I you know, easy to understand, <laughs> but I, I, I'm, sometimes I mangle the English language. President Bush's overall <laughs> approval rating, it now stands at just 42%, the lowest it's ever been. George Bush in The Biggest Loser. <laughs> Man. You are one pathetic loser. Our children and our grandchildren are grown for body parts. Amen. 20 after 10. We got 274 votes on the poll. The uh, what's your who's your favorite all-time athlete? Dan Marino 89. I hate sports 76. <laughs> Is that what you voted? Uh, no, I voted. Uh, I didn't. Somebody had already voted by the time I did. But see, that's oh. not exactly accurate because I don't hate it. I just don't care. Oh, like, no, you hate it. No, it's like who's your favorite French chef? Who is your favorite French chef? I don't care. How about, uh, what's her name? She's dead. What's her name? Oh, come on, the old bag. Julia Child. Okay. Well, she wasn't French. <laughs> Mickey Mantle, 26. Willie Mays, 14. Babe Ruth, 13. Bobby Orr, 13. Shocking. A hockey guy. And I would agree, although my favorite is Johnny Bauer. A Wayne Gretzky, 10. Needle Nose. Bob Greasy, 6. Tom Brady, 6. Go, Tommy. Michael Jordan, 5. Shaq, 5. Who is that? Shaq! Tiger Woods, 5. Mary Lemieux, 4. Magic Johnson won, and Johnny Barr's got my vote, and nobody else, I'm sure. But who cares? He was great. The biggest problem with South Florida, that was our poll yesterday, 1,957 votes. How do you like that, huh? Mm -hmm. Aren't you impressed? Okay. The Cubans, 454. The Cubans. Incredible. Biggest problem in South Florida. And of course, those are the ones who don't listen to this show. Yeah, Too much hate, 334. The drivers. Now, what did you tell me about uh, the guy from Radio El Sol? He was in the uh, building or something? Enrique, yeah, he was here yesterday morning he was with DJ Laz talking about his campaign, that he's going to be running for mayor, and then he was on the news. I see. So he's actually speaking in English. Oh, well, yeah. Excellent. You ought to know since you met him. I met him? When they brought that poster in, remember? They, they brought that in, big, uh, they Jerry Rivera big picture. Pick. It wasn't a poster. It's a, a, a big uh, giant well, portrait. Yeah. And they, uh, Huge. They shook Humongous. your hand, licked your neck. Yeah. Uh, he's got my vote. I'm going to support him, man. I'm all for uh, whatever his name is. Enrique. Anybody named Enrique is okay, man, as long as he doesn't have that big mole. Gotta be too much hate in South Florida. That's the biggest problem. 334 said that. The drivers, 211. They suck. Heat and humidity, 196. The politicians, 152. Can you say crook? New Yorkers, 144. Crook. Hurricanes and tornadoes, 125. Those hurricanes, they suck. Too many old farts, only 101. Boy, that number should have been much, much higher than that. The median age is death plus 80. Too many Bible thumpers, 64. Nothing wrong. It's paradise, 56. Only 2.8%. That's pretty weak. Not the convincing. Journey got 39. <laughs> Journey. Gloria Stefan, 26. The Neil Rogers Show got 20. Too many rednecks, 18. And French Canadians, solamente 17. Is that right? Right. I, I forget at what point. Yeah, obviously you're safe with 17. No, different languages, they start in the teens uh, changing the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. The Torse, Quince, the ACC, the ACC, the ACC, the ACC, Right. And anyway, there it is, French Canadian, Solamente 17. So anyway, the big news, of course, Don Adams is dead. Would you believe, and see, Hank said that, and I, I didn't watch the show. I hated that show, so I don't know that line. Would you believe I didn't watch that show? Mr. Pye, that's much. I didn't, uh, I just, he leaves me a limp. I just didn't think he was funny. I didn't think the show was funny. You're not supposed to say that. The guy just died. He was great. Don Adams, the wry voice comedian who starred as the fumbling secret agent Maxwell Smart in the 60s TV spoof of James Bond movies, Get Smart has died. He was 82. He died of a lung infection late Sunday at Cedar sinai Medical Center, as friend and former agent Bruce Tufeld said yesterday, adding that the actor broke his hip a year ago and has been in ill, Ill health, health ever since. A lot of uh, celebrities, they, uh, they fall down. Like Bing Crosby fell uh, through a stage or something, and he never came back, which is fine with me. But as the inept Agent 86 of the super-secret federal agency Control, Adams captured TV viewers with his antics in combating the evil agents of chaos. When his explanations failed to convince the villains or his boss, he tried another attack. Would you believe, is what he said. And, of course, uh, it became a national catchphrase. I guess I missed that. Yeah. Smart was also prone to spilling things on the desk or person of his boss, the chief actor Edward Platt. I wonder if he was kin to Robin Platt, the Canadian jockey. Smart's apologetic, sorry about that, Chief, also under the American lexicon. The spy gadgets, which aped those of the Bond movies, were a popular feature, especially the pre-cell phone, te the pre -cell phone telephone in a shoe. Smart's beautiful partner, Agent 99, played by Barbara Feldon, 
was as brainy as he was dense, and a plot romance led to marriage and the birth of twins later in the series. He had this prodigious energy, so as an actor working with him was like being plugged into an electric current, Feldon said from New York. He would start, uh, and, a, a, and a scene would just take off, and you were there for the ride. Adams was very intelligent, he said, a quality that suited the satiric show that had comedy geniuses Mel Brooks and Buck Henry behind it. He wrote poetry, had an interest in history. He had the other side of him that doesn't come through, Maxwell Smart. Not in person with anything but bumbling, she said. Adams had an amazing memory that allowed him to take an unusual approach to filming, she said. Instead of learning his lines ahead of time, he would have a script assistant read his part to him just once or twice. He invariably got it right, but didn't stop people from placing bets on it. How do you like that? Get Smart it's twice won the Emmy for Best Comedy Series and uh, three Emmy uh, for Adams as Comedy Actor. How do you like that? Hmm. CBS picked up the show, but the ratings fell off as the joke seemed repetitive. Oh, no kidding. No Schmidt. The show lived on in syndication in a cartoon series. In 95, the Fox Network revived the series with Smart as Chief and 99 as a Congresswoman. It lasted seven episodes. Adams never had another showcase to display his comic talent. And where's the thing about, uh, let's see, he was born Donald James Yarmy in New York, April 19, 1923. The actor's father was a Hungarian Jew who ran a few small restaurants in the Bronx. In 41, he dropped out of school to join the Marines. He became a drill instructor, acquiring the clip delivery that served him well as a comedian. Where's the thing about his, uh, I don't get it. Get what? About the cartoons, about the... Uh, I don't know. I thought that was in this story. Oh, you heard it. Horrible cartoon. Oh, was it really? It's like a gadget. Gadget. Yeah. Tennessee tuxedo is much better. Although they made a movie out of it. After the war, he worked in New York as a commercial artist by day, doing stand-up comedy in clubs at night, taking the surname of his first wife, Adelaide Adams. His following grew soon. He was appearing on the Ed Sullivan and late-night TV shows. Bill Dana, who had helped him develop comedy routines, cast him as a sidekick on Dana's show. You know Bill Dana, Jose Jimenez? See, my name. name. That led to the NBC contract and Get Smart. He was married and divorced three times, had seven children, and served as popular uh, cartoon voice Inspector Gadget, as well as the voice of Tennessee Tuxedo. In 1980, he appeared as Maxwell Smart in a feature film, The Nude Bomb, about a madman whose bomb destroyed people's clothing. John Adams is dead, okay? They're dying like flies, man. It's going around. Dying like flies in Iraq, too, but we better not talk about that. It's bad no. for business. This is Neil Rogers. This is 562 AM. Beautiful. In celebration of Black History Month, CBS Television proudly presents 16 Average Americans are abandoned in the middle of one of the most unforgiving places on Earth. It's Survivor Compton. Who will survive the drive-by voting? As the two tribes. And the my baby daddies. Compete for the immunity bling bling and not get voted off the hood. Followed by a two and a half white man on CBS. I see uh, somebody put Barry Bonds on there. I can't imagine that might be Josh Cordes for the poll today. That was me. Yeah. Well, how come he didn't vote for him yet? Because I can. You, somebody can only vote once. Well, who voted in there? George didn't vote. Who no, voted somebody in, there? in the building. You know, somebody. Some oily Boyd. Oh, I, somebody in the building is uh, on our poll? Holy moly, rat man. That's scary. 321 votes on a poll. Who's your all-time favorite, favorite athlete? Okay. Danny Boyd. Dan Marino. They love you, Danny. Okay. They wish you'd come back. You know Gus Perrot. 105 for Danny. I hate sports. 80. Mickey Mantle. 29. Or as my grandmother used to call him, Mickey Mendel. Willie Mays, 16. Bobby Orr, 16. Baby Ruth, 15. Michael Jordan, 13. He's going to zoom up. He might actually win it. Wayne Gretzky, 10. Shaq has got seven. Shaq! Hey, I hate to break the nice news to you, Shaq, but Michael passed you like you were laying prone flat out right on the court. Bob Greasy, 7. Boy, what a boring guy. Tom Brady, 7. Tiger Woods, 6. Mario Lemieux, 5. Lemieux. Uh, Magic Johnson, 4. Oh, I'm sorry, that's uh, Claude Lemieux and Mario Lemieux. But Johnny Bauer's got a pair. Somebody else voted for old Johnny. And Barry Bonds, so far, has got the big. Oh! But he'll get a vote or two. Well, he only used that cream, you know. He smeared a little on his... Rectum. And then he got uh, ballooned up to like 800 pounds and started slugging all these home runs. Right. What a travesty that is. There ought to be an asterisk next to his name. If he uh, if he actually breaks the record, which I guess eventually he will, that's the, just a disgrace. Hank Aaron and Baby Ruth weren't using like... No, they weren't smearing no steroid cream on there. Rectum. Or anything else. In fact, Baby Ruth, he was busy <laughs> drinking a lot of beer and eating a lot of hot dogs. Before we do the uh, anything else, EPA testers privately telling people New Orleans is off the charts. So anybody out there that was planning on going down there to, like, uh, you know, sympathy vote, spend your, uh, you know, vacation money down there, not a good idea. I would watch Anniversary Party before I go there. Unclean. Yeah. That movie is so bad. Oh. 
No, and, and you read some of these reviews, like this I... one by Stephen Wong. Man, you talk about being Wong. Yeah. We this guy. None so of those guys. Three out of four stars, and he must be on the payroll, you know. Jennifer Jason Lee, Alan Cumming. Uh, what's her name? Jane Adams that uh, played in Happiness. She was great in Happiness, and she was great in this for the first half hour. She just played the same character. Real forlorn, real desperate, real sad sack, real uh, loser body language. It's just, just a pathetic excuse for a human being. But then after, like, uh, it's a two-and-a-half-hour flick. It's over two hours, and it just goes on and on, 150 minutes, so, like, it's almost two hours. Man, if you like that movie, you're easy or you're just stupid. Anyway, CBS News is running this from their guys in New Orleans, which says the teams working in St. Bernard Parish, which is now an enormous toxic waste dump, are waking up with sore throats and other respiratory ailments. Privately, the EPA testers have told them that all the pollutants and environmental toxins are way off the scale. No one is looking to stay there very long. In other words, when in doubt, get the hell out. If this is true, there must be an immediate stop to any plans to repopulate and an immediate full-scale investigation into the EPA and why they're holding all this back. Meanwhile, the Associated Press says that the sludge and everything else that was stirred up by the new flooding in New Orleans because of Rita, and they have no idea if there were any breaches at any hazardous sites, just more uh, of a reason to slow things down, says New Orleans Environment Watch, whatever that is. So just watch. Don't go. Just watch. Speaking of watch, there's uh, Brownie, Brownie Hound, yeah, Mickey watch. Brown. With all due respect, I, I, I do not want to make this partisan, so I, I can't help it that Alabama and uh, Mississippi are governed by Republican governors and that Louisiana is governed by a Democratic governor. I, that's, that's not an issue with me. Well, there you go. CBS is reporting that former FEMA director who is testifying before Congress right now about his incredible ineptitude and about lying on his resumes and about being absolutely, eminently unqualified to be director of FEMA. Uh, he uh, is continuing to work at FEMA at full pay. With the September 12th resignation now taking effect for two more weeks from now, said Homeland Security Department spokesman Russ Naki. CBS News correspondent Gloria Borger reports that Naki told her that technically Brown is still on at FEMA as a contractor and he's transitioning out of his job. The reason he'll remain at FEMA about a month after his resignation, said the spokesman, is the ag agency wants to get the proper download of his experience. <laughs> oh, yeah. During that time, Brown will advise the department some of his views on his experience with Katrina. In other words, he's investigating how he screwed up. You understand? This is kind of like what Arnold was going to do in California, but then changed his mind after he won the election in a landslide. I'm going to investigate. After the election is over, I will investigate all these charges against me. And then, of course, uh, no, I won't. Brown crazy? also said yesterday he should have sought faster help from the Pentagon after Hurricane Katrina hit and accused state and local officials of constant infighting during the crisis, according to congressional aides. He's testifying right now. And bada -beep, bada -boop, bada -boop. Before the House Committee, also on the other side of your screen. And there's your president arriving in Beaumont, Texas, who just said... Abu Ghraib. Yeah, he's uh, doing that like that thing. That thing with that speech he made yesterday when he just lost... I mean, just... Just lost. And I thought he was just going to give up and turn around and walk away. Yeah. That was that was scary. That was really scary. Okay, let's get some more names for this poll. I'm sure that everybody listening, except for you people that hate sports like poison, you anti everything people, uh, has got a name for the poll. Favorite all time athlete. Three hundred and forty four so far. And the reason we don't have five hundred is because we haven't taken any calls yet to get a whole bunch of other names on there, like great athletes, like uh uh Al Kaline. Who? And like uh Gil Hodges and Gil Siegel. What about Gil Siegel from the Camillus House? Five six seven oh five sixty Pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular Wireless lines. I wonder if we're going to have jockeys on there besides p -Val, like maybe Jerry Bailey or Gary Bean. How about some harness drivers? Or Rick Scortino. How about uh, Joe Marsh Jr.? That's right. How about Brad Kramer would be good on there? Randy Waples. Now we're talking. Chris Christopher Rue. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, I heard your crossover with... <laughs> I heard right. your crossover with Hank today. Francis O'Hare, Yes. And uh, I'll give you my, my listing for, uh, on the poll in just a second. But uh, there was, Hank was talking about Pennington real quick. Uh, this, this is how desperate the New York Jets are. They signed Vinny Testaverde today. Oh, my God. He's the new man. Because wow. wow. Fiedler's out for the season, Maybe they too. can sign uh, Joe Willie back up again, too. Well, he's he's going to be he the sure can play. He can really play. <laughs> my vote for the poll, uh, the man I followed throughout... Uh, being a young man, won four straight Stanley Cups, never gets any credit. Billy Smith, he's the man. Billy Smith, bald headed hey, Billy. Thank you, bro. Is, is he still with the organization, by the way, Billy? He used to sit before the games, right where my seats are at the Mac Arena there. He used to come up and, you know, he'd watch practice, and he would sit like just a few seats at the other end of the row, and uh, once in a while, you know, hello, goodbye, depending on what mood he was in. He 
he's not with the Panthers anymore. To be honest with you, I don't think he's with the Islanders either, but I know for a fact he's not with the Panthers anymore. I'll be damned. Okay, Billy Smith, you got it, man. Thanks, bro. See ya. Billy Smith, get him on. Another hockey guy. It's amazing for in a market where nobody cares about hockey, we got several hockey people on there. Of course, I put most of them on there, but nevertheless, getting some votes. I mean, even even George knows Bobby Orr. Or who? WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how are you? Pretty good. Um, you know, one of my athletes I thought when I was a kid was um, Lyle Alzado with the Raiders. Right. Um, I, I thought he was a Classy crazy guy. guy. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like watching him play. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Uh, Lyle Alzado, he's going to get a lot of votes. Nah, uh, I know who that is. Steroid no, no. junkie, dead. Yeah, he's, he is dead. Yeah, from steroids. Right, that's why I said classy guy. That's why I said that. I Very classy guy. I guarantee he didn't smear his on his rectum like Barry Bonds, though. Hey, Barry. You fairy. Okay, we'll, we'll get a whole bunch of names on here. Don't panic. We'll get, like, thousands of names on here because there's thousands of athletes. I'm sure somebody will probably vote for Kevin Wallace. Maybe somebody will vote for Joe Pavia Jr. or even Wally Hennessy, but I sure doubt it. This is Neil Rogers. Donald Brainerd. This is 516 AM. Holy Mackinac! This is Joe Bow on the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and you're listening to the Hockey Authority, Neil God. Absolutely. Just into the QM news department. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't we have a news department? Yes. Two men have been arrested important. and charged with the mafia style killing of sandwich chain gambling fleet founder Constantinos Gus Boulas four years ago, a state law enforcement official said today. Anthony Ferrari was taken into custody at his North Miami Beach home last night, said the official who spoke on condition of anonymity because the charges hadn't been publicly announced yet. Fort Lauderdale homicide detectives arrested Anthony Moscatiello, 67, at his Howard Beach home in New York late last night. Ferrari, 48, is being held at the Broward County Jail. Both men were charged with first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and solicitation to commit murder. They're going to be in court today. we got a picture of uh, Anthony Ferrari here. He looks like a really uh, scary kind of a guy. Yeah. Like a man, like A very scary guy. Ferrari. Bullis was ambushed after he left his office in Fort Lauderdale. Fe- February 6, 2001, was shot to death after two cars stopped him. <laughs> but a bing. Bullis, 51, was a Greek immigrant who made his first fortune with the Miami Sub sandwich chain. He later founded Sun Cruise Casino as a gambling fleet who sailed into charges last month against prominent Washington lobbyist Jack Abramoff. How do you like that? It all kind of like fits together, like mm-hmm. a uh, Greek puzzle, whatever really? that means. Okay, let's get a whole bunch of names on here. Let's not dilly-dally today, because I want to get 75,000 votes on here, and the only way to do that is get everybody's favorite athlete on the poll. Everybody. WQAM, hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, it's WQAM. WQAM, you got it. That's the one. Yeah, I just call. I got a uh, name for the poll. Okay, what's that? Uh, Dick Buckus. Dick Buckus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Dick I Buckus. I didn't just like the way he said that too well, but Dick Buckus. Just so we can say it a whole bunch of times. Right, or like Bubkus. Now, Dick Buckus, what's wrong with that? He was a hell of a player. The Bears, Dick Buckus. <laughs> He's a hard-nosed guy. Goy? You said. WQAM, hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Um, Neil, I think you left somebody off. Well, that's the idea. That's why we're talking to you guys. Okay. How about Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali. Well, what's not to like about that? He's no Cassius Clay. He's no Cassius Clay is right. Thanks a lot, pal. Okay. Take care. Muhammad Ali. Well, we can put some boxers on here. For all your real old farts, how about Joe Lewis? Let's put him on here. The Bronx. Huh? Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson be good. I bet you we got some people. If somebody likes Lyle Alzado, I guarantee we got people like Mike Tyson. Iron Mike. <clears throat> what do you say? Keep it up with these guys? I'm sure you are. They're on there. Oh, boy, Surly. You hear that, Surly? Because he knows he's going to have to put a lot of names on his pool today. Well, you can't okay. see it, but Surly because of his uh, sunburn now that's flaking off of his face, so he's in a bad Oh, hand. really? What? He ain't pretty that's, today. Uh, huh? He ain't pretty today. He looks like he has leprosy. 
Oh, well, just wait till it starts. You can start getting them big blobs on your cheeks and your face, too. Rectum. You can smear it. Maybe Barry Bonds will loan you a little bit of that steroid cream. You can smear it on your Rectum. blobs. WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. Good morning. Buenos dias. Let me say something before I give you my uh, choice for the poll. Go right ahead. Because it was something I was going to bring up to you, how you're always saying, well, you know, we don't have so many Julios out there who listen. We don't. I, I, I really think you do. I just, well, as you know, a lot of these Julios are still in the closet. Man. No, no, seriously. I think a lot of the Julios are still in the closet. Yeah, oh, I'm sure of that. You fool. <laughs> but I, I really believe at least, I'm serious about this, at least oh. 30 to 40% of the Neil Rogers audience is Cuban Julios like myself. That's oh, right. my God. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling Holy you. cow. Well, that's good. We want we want everybody, man. We like, uh, except maybe some of those Jamaican guys. They can be dangerous. <laughs> okay, let me say, uh, let me George give you Jackie Neil. Robinson for I the poll. Jackie Robinson would be great speaking of dark-complected guys. And in closing, Uncle Neil? Yes? I never said no, 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 no. Okay. How about Yogi Berra? Because I'm thinking when he said Jackie Robinson, the first image that comes to your mind is that World Series. I think it was 52. I'm not positive. Oh, yeah. When uh, Jackie Robinson stole home. And uh, you know, they always see that picture of, I think Nestor Shylock was the home plate umpire and called him safe. Maybe not. I, that wasn't the umpire. But anyway, maybe it was uh, Summers. But at any rate, uh, and there's Yogi who puts on the tag, and Yogi went ape Schmidt because they called Jackie safe. And he's jumping up and down. And that was even before he met the Aflac Duck. Even George knows Yogi from the Aflac Duck. Oh, yeah. You know Yogi Berra. Come on. Sure, he's on those commercials. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. We have Muhammad Ali. Did we put him on there? I hope. Yeah, we did. Okay. Okay. Come on, now. Okay, just for, now. Listen, I can't <laughs> help it that you're an idiot and you sit out there in the sun and get yourself fried, working up a nice uh, carcinoma or melanoma or whatever you're working on. It's burned. Yeah, that's right. Fried. Why don't you just stick your head on that flavor wave and put the top on and see if uh, it works real good? Maniac. WQAM. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? Pretty good. Good. Uh, I have two for the poll. Is that okay? okay? Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Big in the news lately, man. I'm quite tired of hearing about him, but nevertheless. And Brian Piccolo. Brian Piccolo. Well, there you go. I bet you James Conn would agree with that. And Gail Sears. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Bye. Brian's song. Even in another one George knows because he's seen the movie. Right. Well, 100 years ago. Right. I remember it's, James Conn was in it, and uh, What's-His-Name Dies. That's about it. That's all I remember. What's-His-Name Died. Brian. Gail Sears. Yeah. Five six seven oh five sixty and Brian Piccolo that is. I know uh, Brian Piccolo Park used to live right next to it. I beg your pardon. Brian Piccolo Park, the station we used to be right next to it, out there in Pembroke Pines. Piccolo Park. Brian Piccolo Park. What station is that? This station used to be right next to it. Oh, you're talking about when you had that were in the trailer. Well, I was yeah. never in there. I just went there one day and I. Mm -hmm. I I walked out of there. I thought it was like in New Orleans, man. It was talking about a festering sewer. Hey, what a dump. It had a funk. What a dump. It was the funky palace. You had to see it to believe it, that anybody would be. And that's why when Norma brought me in that building for my <laughs> tour, my grand tour of that building, and I saw all yeah. the stained carpet and the stains on the walls. looked like guys were peeing on the yeah. walls like Billy Carter had been there or something. Well, the carpeting was on the walls. <laughs> oh, God, what a toilet. And I thought to myself, this Greg Reed, man, you can't complain about his uh, idea. And then, of course, come to find out it's the Beasleys, you know. What do you expect when your whole family is sitting up in a tree playing the banjo? My God, what a mugwumpy place that is. A toilet. And now, of course, it's palatial compared to what it was back then. And even now it's a dump. In fact, you were just telling me this morning that there's a real funky smell in there the, the studios some, now. There is. died in these uh, rooms or something. I'll be or to the vents. WQAM, hello. Yeah, what about uh, Sugar Ray Leonard? Sugar Ray Leonard's good. How about, uh, I didn't think that the uh, media could get any more blatantly partisan. Yeah. But, but they did not even have one picture of the protest last weekend. That not is correct. One. I didn't it, see five not, seconds of coverage on the protest. Not I nothing. didn't watch C-SPAN for it. Right. Isn't that pathetic? It, uh, not, not, to mention, not to mention we don't see any stories, including live stories, now that they're set up with a satellite over there. They could be showing us the conditions in Iraq and what's going on there with the bloodshed. Be. We don't see anything about that. Nothing. Uh, you wouldn't even know that there's a war going on if, that it, is correct. if, if you didn't see uh, the That is Bush absolutely correct. Tomorrow. All we see now is a lot of water in New Orleans and these hearings going on. Bada beep, bada boop, bada bop. You know, it's a good diversion. Screw Roberts. Amen. Well, this isn't Roberts. This is uh, Mikey Brown. Downtown, Mickey Brown. Brownie, hey, Brownie, you did a heck of a job, Brownie. ...about some other set of disaster planning that didn't uh, pose these, these huge extraordinary risks. And um, it can't be approached that way and expect the results to come out any different than they did, which is to say that the coordination effort, if, it, if that was the object of FEMA... Yeah, that's it. Rip, rip, rip them over the coals. Rip them an ass, okay? Like, this is really going to accomplish something, okay? Make uh, every, a lot of people feel better, but uh, not going to change nothing. 
The fact that you got a sewer over there and you had a bunch of cronies put in there in charge of saving people's lives. Emergency preparedness. Safety, safety, safety. I'd like to get a hold of that old bitch, okay? I'd oh. like to steal her bag. And I'm not talking about handbag either. Even beat her with it. Yeah, make her sniff it. WQAM, hello. Richard Simmons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, he's a real athlete. Yeah, he's a real job sniffer, I'm yeah. sure. WQAM, hello. Yeah, i got a couple of names I want to add. Yes, sir. Want me to tell you? Come on, Stan. Well, it would be, uh, is this Stan Wertheimer? No. Oh, well, that's what George was saying. didn't sound like Stan to me. Go ahead. Maybe it's Stan Major. No. Go ahead. Paul. We don't care what your name no. is, Paul. It's Glenn okay. Rice and Jim. Yeah, what is it? Glenn, Glenn Rice, Rice and Jim Thorpe. And Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe. Boy, that's, uh, you must be older than me. I'm only two. No, I, I, I don't know. I'm, you, I'm older than everybody. Nah, <laughs> me but, too. Okay, thanks. thanks but I'll Paul. play your racquetball anytime you want. Okay, I'll bet you will. Okay. <laughs> no, you won't. Yeah, I'll, I'll kick the crap out of you. I'll show you a thing or two, you young whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> By the yeah. way, what's a whipper? I, I invented old Paul, okay, so just relax. Uh, Jim Thorpe, and uh, who is the other one? Glenn Rice. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, we're asking we're asking for your opinion. I mean, we can't tell you who your favorite uh, athlete ought to be. I mean, this is one of those where we're going, oh, no, that's not the right answer. There is no right answer. It's your opinion. It's like saying, what's your favorite color? Uh, right. Red. Oh, no, that can't be it. Uh, whatever it is, it is. Some people just have crappy taste. Probably some people saw that movie, The Anniversary Party, and liked it, too, which those people need to be taken out. Let's call Pat Robertson and put a, a, a hex on him. Call up, uh, what's your name, the witch on uh, Passions. What the hell's your name? Witch? WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, what's up? Okay. Um, is O.J. Simpson on your poll? Not yet. Not yet? Uh, yeah, if you look past the double murders and the spousal abuse, he was a great player. Oh, there you go. Man. No question about it, man. And that's, uh, that goes to show, tell us a lot about him and a lot about you, too. So we got Lyle Alzado and O.J. on there. I killed Nicole. Right, we know that. Yeah, the, oh, we still have an open invitation to come on this uh, show anytime you want to call in, O.J., to admit it. That's the only circumstances we'll let you on. You can go right there in the studio. we got a nice machete there that, George, I'm sure will alone you. Right. It's not sharpened, but I can fix that. Yeah. Disaster planning and having specifically chosen New Orleans because of the potential for a Oh, why, why are they going through this dog and pony show? Like the guy said before, we got all this really important stuff that the public needs to be seeing, and instead they'd fill up all this airtime with his garbage as if, as if we don't already know. This is strictly a hack. This is a guy that was absolutely 500% unqualified, didn't know his ass from my elbow, didn't know as of Thursday afternoon that the day before there were thousands of desperate, starving people and dying people at the convention center. He didn't know nothing, okay? Because he's bunk butt buddies with El Presidente, just like all these other losers. And we have to have all these hearings and bada beep, bada boop, bada ba. Wasting your tax dollars nicely, by the way. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. This is the Neil Rogers Show. This is your brain. <laughs> Any questions? The brain. That's our poll question today. We're going to get a zillion people on here today. That's good. We got 430 votes in the first hour. We have a lot more than that if we had all the names of every athlete on there, but we don't. Not yet. By the end of the day, we will, though. How about uh, Bobby Richardson? What about Tony Kubek? What about Bill Scourin? What about Joe Collins, huh? What about uh, Eddie Robinson? Who's Stop your all-time favorite athlete? Dan Marino, 129. I hate sports, 96. Well, you know what? Too bad, your mama. Lighten up a little bit. Stop being so full of hate. Mickey Mantle, 38, rhymes with hate. He was great. Ma Michael Jordan, 28. Totally, he's zooming on up there. Michael, Michael. Babe Ruth, 21. Willie Mays, 18. Bobby Orr, 18. Wayne Gretzky, 12. Needle Nose. Hate him like poison. Muhammad Ali, 10. Tom Brady, 10. Nice going, Tom, baby. 
Uh, Magic Johnson, 9. Shaq, 9. No, I did not vote for Tom Brady. Uh, Bob Greasy, 8. Mary Lemieux, 7. Tiger Woods, 6. Even if we had a poll about who is the best-looking male athlete of all time, I wouldn't vote for Tom Brady. I'd probably have to write in Jim Dory or maybe Aaron Gavey. Nevertheless, forget about that fag stuff. Bob Greasy, 8. Mary Lemieux, 7. Tiger Woods, 6. Lance Armstrong's got a pair. Lyle Alzado, 2. He'll even loan you his tube. He'll loan you his tube. Johnny Bauer's got a pair. Still alive, Johnny, and still kicking. He's a hell of a guy. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard won. Yogi Berra won. The Aflac Duck voted. Uh, Dick Buckus won. He didn't know Buckus about Dick Buckus before he started doing the show, George. Now he knows exactly. Billy Smith won. Uh -huh. Barry Bonds won. None yet for O.J., Jim Thorpe, Glenn Rice, Brian Piccolo, Jackie Robinson, Mike Tyson, or Joe Lewis. Oh, I... <laughs> Are you all right there? <laughs> L O U I S, not L E W. J that Lewis, you spell like uh, Joe E. Lewis, the comedian, or Jerry Lewis. No, Joe Lewis, L O U. That's why I looked at that and I thought, who the hell is that? Lewis and Clark. Oh, really? I didn't uh, know that. Well, you, I guess Eric will have to change it. I guarantee you, Eric knows Joe Lewis, okay? Well, I know Believe Joe me. Lewis. I didn't know you spelled it that way. Yeah. Well, maybe you can help him pay his uh, back taxes, even though he's dead a long time now. But, you, can pay, you know, he, he had his problems. He was, he was led down the garden path by the white man. He was a great boxer, a great guy, but he was uh, given bad advice, you know. Maybe Norma Kent was his agent. WQAM, hello. QAM. Yeah, I'm uh, one for Neil Soul. Yes, sir. What do you got? Uh, great on and off the field, Roberto Clemente. Roberto Clemente, arriba, arriba, excellent choice, thank you. All right, thanks. Arriba, Roberto Clemente, can you handle that now? Now, even you know who that was. I do. Oh, please, please don't tell me you don't know from Roberto Clemente. If you tell me that, I'm just going to fall on the flow. He does, he's just over there typing. Roberto Clemente, right field, great arm, great clutch hitter, two great World Series. And then, uh, you know, he died in that plane, he was trying to bring relief. Where the hell was that? Nicaragua, Guatemala, one of those places, one of those beaner places. And the plane crashed, Puerto Rico, was it? I think so, yes. I don't know. But anyway, he died much too soon, much too young. He was great. WQAM, hello. Yeah, two for your poll. Okay. Uh, I'll go with Roberto Clemente. Okay, who's that? Okay. <laughs> and I'll give you another one that probably only Neil will recognize. His name was Boog Powell. Orioles, first base. That's right. Okay, thanks a lot, Pally. Boog Powell, we love the Boogster, man. We used to like the books to run the radio, too, until he became uh, bunk butt buddies with uh, Dan Love, with that little bastard. 5670560, I told you, are going to be a lot of names on this pool today. This may be our longest list ever, which is good. You know, keep you off the streets. 441 votes. Joe Lewis don't have any yet. That's because that uh, spelling is most amusing. That's one of your best, all-time best. Isn't that w what they call Boo Boo? Boo. Boo Powell. John Boo Powell. WQAM, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm one for your poll. Okay. Larry Zonka. Larry Zonka, okay, who almost died, uh, just got rescued a couple weeks ago, right? Yes, he did. He's a lucky man out there. In that yes, he is. All right, thank okay, you, th sir. Thanks, Pally. Larry Zonka, old Zonk. He almost got zonked. Maybe he ran into, uh, what's his name? They used to do the Zonka. Let's make a deal. Monty, Monty Hall. Great Canadian boy, Monty Hall. Good Jewish boy. Made a ton of money, gives a lot of money to charity, and stays out of everybody's face, Monty Hall. I like that. Retire and stay out of everybody's face. Oh, speaking of that, the bowling for Columbine I saw again two nights ago. Yeah. And that Dick Clark thing. I sure hope that isn't true about him coming back for New Year's again this year. I sure hope that's just swishful thinking. Think because we're true. hoping that that second stroke really kicked in big time. Now, what a, what a bastard. You know, Maybe the where ball he's in, will fall on him this time. He's in the van. Close the door. Close the door. Now, we are, we're behind, way behind schedule. Close the door. Bastard. Piece of crap, man. Phony baloney. Speaking of Boney Maroney and Larry Williams in short, fat panty. And by the way, did you talk to your bald-headed friend yet? Did you straighten his little ass out? Yes. You did speak to him. Is yeah. he, does he I understand now? Does he understand the end of September from uh, whatever date he just conveniently picked out of his head? Everything. Yeah. You better get with it, Baldy, okay, old chicken neck, because, uh, you know, you and I, our days are numbered in uh, probably single digits. Old and feeble, okay? So you better enjoy them while you can. Don't be, you know, pressuring uh, anybody. Don't be, like, uh, hyperventilating. Oh, that's his style, though. He's, you know. When you're dealing with crazy people, that's the way they are, right? Yeah, well. You have to deal with the bad with the good. Well, people who are very talented like him, they tend to be a little <laughs> crazy like that. Walk hand in hand. <laughs> As you well know. WQAM, hello. Neil, one for yeah. the Okay. Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon, okay. In fact, we got a great bit about Jeff Gordon that I'm sure everybody will love to hear about. <laughs> and that's it. That's the one. Jeff Gordon, man, that NASCAR stuff, that just sends me right to the old bull. How's your buddy Joe Costello doing? Do you tell him to quit calling me? 
Five six seven oh five sixty. I'm serious about that. Hey Joey, uh, it's not personal. I like you, but I, I just don't like when people call you and they have nothing to say. You know, you called me. What do you want? You know, I don't. I really don't like saying that. But no, I used to say that to Rimmer all the time. You know, you called me. What say something? You know, what what was the purpose besides you bored to death and you're bugging you're bugging the hell out of me? You're just sucking around again, using me as a human prop. Oh God! In fact, when he, when the Panthers when we had the old arena. And he and Denise Potvin used to televise the games from behind where my seats happened to be with my luck. Not the first year. The first year my seats were across the way. But then I got seats like real, much better seats. And their broadcast table was like uh, I could, you know, during the whole game I'd look back there and he'd be like, uh, you know, winking and blinking and nodding. And so then the end of the period would come and he'd get up and walk off. And, and he'd give me the, you know, come on, come, come here, come here. I'd, I'd have to go back there and schmooze with him in between periods. Not because he wanted to talk about anything, because he wanted to aggravate Denise Potvin, who hated me like poison. So the fact he was talking to me, just a way of aggravating you, Denise, because he hates you, wishes you would croak a horrible, wicked death. Just every phone conversation I had with this man, with Jeff Rimmer, at least 90% of the conversation was about uh, what a motor mouth pup and, and how dumb he was and uh, just ripping an ass. He hates you. So when Columbus uh, Straightjackets come to town, Denise, I hope you have a real warm uh, reunion, you frog. WQAM, hello. Neil God. Yes, sir, speaking. How about Jim Mandich? Jim Mandich, there's one. All right. Amen. <laughs> Love you, Neil. Thanks a lot, Pally. The former tight end. A lot of guys formerly were tight ends. And Wrecked them. 459 votes on that poll. Let's take a peek and see who's doing it. Dan, is there any doubt Danny Boy's going to win? No. 133, because in South Florida, 134. Even as I spoke in mid-sentence, he got another one. What do you say about Jimmy Syphilis, besides bad broadcaster? I hate sports, 97, Mickey Mendel, 39, Michael Jordan, 29. He's moving right up on Mickey's ass. Hey, Mike, maybe you'll loan him his liver. What do you think? He could use a liver. Cool. Babe Ruth, 21, Muhammad Ali, 20, Willie Mays, 19, Bobby Orr, 18, Wayne Gretzky, 12. It's amazing to me that we got how many hockey players on this list? Let's see the percentage of votes. We got Bobby Orr, Wayne Gretzky. That's uh, 30 votes, about 30. Uh, Johnny Bauer's got three. That's 33. Uh, any other hockey player? No. So, like, uh, about 8% of the total 462 hockey player. That is shocking, isn't it? I don't see anybody putting uh, Stu Barnes on there yet, or Joe Sorella. WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, I have to vote by phone, uh, but my hero when I was growing up was Dick Butkus, number 51 for the Chicago Bears. Right, he's on there. Uh, there there's, uh, also, you said uh, Lance Armstrong had a pair. Well, yeah. he, he only has one. He had the other one surgically removed when he was Yeah, he's, uh, he's the Tom Green of uh, sports, <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, there's a story about Dick Butkus. Uh, that when the, uh, he was on the bottom of a pile, and he, when the ref reached in to grab the football, he bit the ref's finger off. Can you believe All that? All right. Nice going there, uh, Dick. <laughs> See you, buddy. Thanks a lot, pal. Prominence after 11 at 560. Did we put the Joe Namath on there? He's going to get some votes, Joe Willie. He could play, man. He could drink, too. Yeah, he could play. He could drink. <laughs> Oh, come on. Are you are you picking on the old guy when he's down now just because he made a fool? Joe, it's been a tough season for Jet fans. What does it mean to you now when the team is struggling? I want to kiss you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. And I want to kiss you. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they were struggling. They were struggling. Oh, brother. Well, didn't he go to Alabama? Ain't yeah. he from Alabama? Yeah, that's Joe. I know he went to Alabama. He played quarterback at Alabama. He's from Alabama. He's a good old boy. Illiterate. But he sure had that one big year in there in 69, man. If you're going to open up a big mouth, you better come through. See, that's what I say in this radio business, Joel. If you're going to open up a big mouth and talk a big game, you better come through with some big, big numbers, okay? You know what I'm saying? Do, 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 do. And there's another one. Talk's a big game, but you better come up with some real big, juicy, fat numbers, okay? If you're going to start opening up a big mouth. See, I got big, fat, juicy ones and numbers, too. That's why I can open up a mouth. But people like uh, Joel over there, it's got fractions that most of his numbers begin with a... Oh! That's not somebody that ought to be opening up a mouth about, about radio and about sports radio and stuff like that. Joel, you quizzling, you idiot, you simpleton, you... You fairy. 11.13 at 5.60 WQAM. For years, I've been telling you about my good friends at Dry Concepts, the very best carpet cleaning company in the world. They do a lot of other things besides just making your carpets look brand new. They can save you hundreds, even thousands of dollars by doing a lot of other great stuff for you, too. They specialize in drapery cleaning, upholstery and leather furniture restoration, mattress cleaning, oriental rug cleaning, pet odor treatments, and water damage restoration, too. Dry Concepts can also clean and restore your tile and grout quickly and efficiently. 
Their professional staff is always improving to serve you with the most advanced cleaning techniques ever discovered. And during this month, which is running out fast, during September, take advantage of the Summer Sizzler Number 2 package and water damage special at Dry Concepts 2. Dry Concepts, from carpet cleaning to tile and grout cleaning, the only place to call. In Dade, Broward, and the Palm Beaches, call them toll-free. And once you use them, by the way, you'll understand why I've used them for over 20 years in all of my homes. Call 1-800-248-5071. No rip-offs, no games, no scams, no tack-ons at the end. They give you a written guaranteed price up front before they start doing their fantastic job. 1-800-248-5071 or on the Wicked Web, it's dryconcepts.com. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Hey, it's Howard. Howard Spam. Are you ready to order, sir? Yes, I'll have the... Shoot! 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 Uh, steak, please. This man suffers from a rare form of Tourette syndrome called G-rated Tourette's. Ah, uh, that comes with a vegetable. I'll try the... Cod! 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 Uh, carrots, please. Symptoms of G-rated Tourette's syndrome include uncontrollable outbursts of euphemisms. And uh, for an appetizer? Mm, how about the... Shucks! 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 Shrimp cocktail. Unfortunately, there is no... No cure for G-rated Tourette's. Would you care for a salad? Yes. The heck, 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 house salad. Oh, wait, you know what? Make that a golly, 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 gosh, 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 dear Greek salad. Okay, that's one. Get to it, get to it, get to it. <sighs> Greek salad. The good news is G-rated Tourette's isn't as offensive as other forms of Tourette's. The bad news is it's a lot more annoying. And for dessert. Oh, I'll have the fudge, 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 fudge. Uh, Maybe that's what the, the big O is got because he keeps saying rocks, 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 rock, 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 rock solid. Man, that one spot, boy, it's just, uh, well. Yeah, they can't rock it enough. Cindy Sheehan, the California woman who's used her son's death in Iraq to spur the anti-war movement, was arrested yesterday while protesting outside the White House. Did you see this? Yes, I did. Sheehan and several dozen other protesters sat down on the sidewalk after marching along the pedestrian walkway on Pennsylvania Avenue. Police have warned them three times they were breaking the law by failing to move along and began making arrests. Sheehan, 48, was the first taken into custody. She stood up and was led to a police vehicle while protesters chanted, The whole world is watching. Sheehan's 24 year well, we know that. Sheehan was among several hundred demonstrators who marched around the White House yesterday, then stopped in front and began singing and chanting, Stop the war now. They were all chanting, Stop the CCA deal now. And uh, Josh is saying, What? That's the part I slept through. The demonstration is part of a broader anti-war effort. We know that. Representatives from anti-war groups were meeting yesterday with members of Congress to urge them to work to end the war and bring the troops home. But they're too busy worrying about downtown Mikey Brown. Great job, Brownie. Hound, you're doing it. And your girlfriend got it uh, good yesterday. My girlfriend, oh, Lindy. Yeah, my girlfriend. Army PFC, Lindy England, who's smiling poses and photos of detainee abuse at Baghdad's Abu Ghraib prison, made her uh, the face of the scandal, was convicted yesterday by a military jury on six or seven counts, to which I say, All right. Even though she is being scapegoated, nevertheless, if anybody deserved it, she does. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I agree. England, 22, was found guilty of one count of conspiracy, four counts of maltreating detainees, and one count of committing an indecent act. She was acquitted on a second conspiracy count. The jury of five male Army officers took about two hours to reach its verdict. Her case now moves to the sentencing phase, which is being heard by the same jury starting today. England tried to plead guilty in May to the same count she faced this month in exchange for an undisclosed sentencing cap, but a judge threw out a plea deal. She now faces a maximum of nine years in prison. Oh, oh she's going to have a great time in there. England, wearing her dark green dress uniform, stood at attention yesterday as the verdict was read by a jury foreman. She showed no obvious emotion afterward. As for a comment after the verdict, defense attorney Captain Jonathan Crisp said, The only reaction I can say is, I understand. How do you like that? I understand. All right, well, what would you expect? England's trial is the last for a group of nine Army reservists charged with mistreating prisoners at Abu Ghraib in Iraq, a scandal that badly damaged the U.S. image in the Muslim world despite quick condemnation of the abuse by President Bush. Two other troops were convicted in trials, and remaining six made plea deals. Several of those soldiers testified at England's trial. They were anxious. They were singing, I want to testify. 567, you hear that uh, phone? I do. 567-0560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon Singular Wireless Line. Let's get every athlete who ever played the game on here. Let's get Phil Rizzuto, the scooter. Let's have Ted Williams. What about Ted Williams, huh? Okay. What about Roger Clemens? Don't you think? I mean, I'm just thinking of yeah. people that are going to get a lot of votes because we can only take so many thousand calls between now and 2 o'clock. We can't get everybody. But I'm thinking of people who are really obvious, huh? What right. about Stan Musial? Or as Harry Carey used to call him, Stan Musial, right? Isn't that a laxative? What about Ernie Banks? Now, that's Metamusial. Oh. What about Ernie Banks? Let's play 10. I'm, I'm just naming ones that I think Josh knows who they are and he can spell. 
As opposed to Joe Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. I don't see Joe Lewis on the bottom anymore. Maybe he ran into Max Schmeling. Uh, he must have a vote or two. Did uh, we take him off or put him on? Did we, did we spell it? Joe is still spelled uh, wrong. So if you want to vote for Joe Lewis, the boxer, we got it spelled wrong, and Eric is, like, dawdling on that. L-O-U-I-S, okay, Lewis. Not like Lewis, the corn sure is special in uh, Deliverance. God. WQAM, hello. There's an underrated actor for you, Ned Beatty, man. Is he good or what? QAM. Yes. Hello. Not there. WQAM, hello. Are we going to go two for two now? Two. Yep. Let's try three for three. QAM, hello. Hey, Neil, hello. what's up? I got yes, one sir. people. Larry okay. Bird. Larry Bird, okay, one of the ugliest people ever to uh, walk the face of the earth. But a hell Great of a player, player, and it'll get you a free refill at our betters. There yeah. you go. Thanks, Pally. What about Havlicek stole the ball? That Johnny Most. Anybody that would criticize Johnny, Johnny Most has got to be just jealous. Do, 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 be do, do, an do. idiot. Here's one from Bob in Fort Lauderdale. How about Jesse Owens because he made Hitler look like an a-hole? Well, I thought Adolf did a good job of that himself, but Jesse Owens is good, and he was a great athlete, too. 36 Olympics in Munich. Wasn't it in Munich? Okay. As long as we're putting ex-bears on the pole, how about the greatest? Walter Sweetness Payton. Let's get Walter Payton on there. says uh, Gray in Coral Springs. Is that Gray or is that Gay? And also, here's uh, the handwriting of somebody a lot older than me. Please consider Joe DiMaggio and Lou Gehrig. It says, thank you, moldy oldie. <laughs> Another moldy oldie. Hey, this is the old people station. Have no fear, okay? Nothing wrong with getting old. It happens to all of us. Just ask Joel. Please consider Joe. You got Joe DiMaggio and Lou Gehrig on there? Yeah. I mean, can you spell Lou Gehrig right? G-E-H-R-I-G. I don't want to like Calm down. Okay, on. I got it. You're down. That's what I heard for the count. You and Joe Lewis. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. We're gonna have a list of about fifty thousand names on here today. Oh! Little did I ever suspect. Did you? No. What? We got five hundred and seven votes. We'd have a lot more than that if we had everybody's favorite on there. Yeah, but we don't. That's why we keep taking zillions of calls today instead of reading like a whole bunch of stupid ass. And I don't want to read a whole bunch of stupid ass stories because I got a little headachey anyway. You know, probably because my blood sugar is like seven hundred. It's really high. Because I went out and got uh, Ben and Jerry's last night. Should never have Ben and Jerry's oh. ice cream at night, huh? My Why'd blood sugar is not it? good today. Huh? Why'd you do it? I, Because I felt like it, because my addiction to sugar was kicking, not for any I special see. reason. And then, making it even worse, then I found that movie, The Anniversary Party. Ah, I think that was I God's see. punishment I for eating that Ben and Jerry's chocolate uh, brownie. Brownie, huh? It was an honor of the hearings today for brownie. And so I was inspired, being psychic as I am. I thought, let's uh, go get some brownie stuff. Chocolate brownie, fudge, whatever. That's not, not really very good. You ever have that? Uh, not that I recall. As, as much as I love Ben and Jerry's, they got some really crappy flavors, really. I, it's, ooh, some really nasty stuff. I'm starting to turn just a little bit like I told you that I did to a haagen man with that banana nut. WQAM, hello. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good, Pally. What do you got? Here's an easy one for Josh to spell. How about Carl Yastrzemski? All right, excellent choice. All right. Thanks, Pally. Carl Yastrzemski, can you spell that? It's got seven Ys and three Zs in it. I yeah, guess I'll have to I, Google I met, it. I met him once. You met Carl Yastrzemski? He was in the uh, back at IOD years ago, and wow. I had no idea who he was when I met him. Yeah. Or what sport he played, or, but I knew that he was a jock because I'd never heard of him. Boston Red Sox, baby, great slugger. And uh, you also met Kurt Gowdy. I did. The uh, former voice of the Red Sox and also the voice of uh, AFL football and uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Kurt Gowdy. I met Kurt when he was in there that night. I thought, who, who show was he? I, I guess I guess he had to be on the uh, sports talk show because we only had one. We only had two hours of sports talk on IOD because we figured two hours a day repeating the same stuff every day was more than enough for the uh, sport hole. And it was. This is Neil Rogers. All right. This is 560 QAM. What? What is Both them sport holes today celebrate. Your insertion into the sport hole of fame. Number 13. A fine thing for winning a fine super. A stitch of cow manure covered over this performance if no one else showed up to play. You were even given a house for free. And they had a treaty with living. 
brought us to a war. Take me over, of course. And the fire in hell chose the lips. And no contract to hold us back. At the top in the Mandalorian Oh, the Vets could win A game against Harry Shire It's 11.32. Look at this uh, for the poll. John McEnroe is spelled very badly. Don't take it from this. You know how to spell McEnroe. M-C, capital E, N-R-O-E. I got it, I got it. Okay. Well, he, you're right, man. That, uh, that cancer that's uh, setting in all over his face and his body right. is starting to really aggravate him. Leprosy. I, I spelled Joe Lewis wrong, and you think that I, uh, you know. I bet, well, everyone, well, I bet a lot of people would spell it the regular way. Yeah, the regular way. L-O-U-I-S. The irregular way. Anyway, uh, I wouldn't uh, be too nervous about that because Eric still hasn't corrected that. It's been it's been a faux pas on there for a long time now, and Eric is too busy having uh, breakfast sandwiches, those cross sandwiches from Burger King. He's got like six bags full now, just shoveling them down. So don't uh, t- I mean, by this time he should have that change. Joe Lewis, my ass. Anyway, this says uh, Don Rumsfeld is giving the president his daily briefing. He concludes by saying, yesterday three Brazilian soldiers were killed. Oh, no, the president exclaims. That's terrible. His staff sits stunned at this outburst of emotion, nervously watching as the president sits at his desk, head in hands. Finally, the president looks up and says, uh, how many is a Brazilian? <laughs> That's, That's kind of cute, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Kind of like saying the president is a moron. It's kind of like Abu Ghraib dumb. Okay, here's a fact that says the list can't be complete without Thurman Munson. See, the list is your the, your favorite athlete of all time. Now, we're not asking for your favorite dead athlete who died in a plane crash or anything like that, but if that's uh, your favorite, fine. I, we'll put him on there, Thurman I, Munson. I didn't know he won't Herman get a lot of votes, Herman I don't Herman think. I, beg your pardon? I didn't know Herman Munster was an athlete. Herman Munster, right. I thought he was an actor. Well, let's put John Kerry on there, too. I mean, let's let's put all the Yankees on it. We got so many New Yorkers. Let's put Joe Pepitone on there, and Joe uh, uh, Bill Scourin, and Andy Carey, and Gil McDougal. Herb score is still PO to you, by the way, Gil. I think Joe McDougal died, didn't he? I think so. I think God punished him early for uh, that line dr- lion drive. Who is it that says that it's a lion drive? Who said that? Somebody used to just. I don't know. Oh, uh, I can't think of who it was. Oh, Bob Murphy he used to do the Mets games. A lion drive. Lion, L-I-O-N. That's how uh, Bob Murphy spelled it, and Josh would agree. Lion drive. Bob Murphy, awful, awful, fuddy daddy old guy. He kind of, he was kind of like to the Mets what Jack Brickhouse was to the Cubs. B H before Harry. Five six seven oh five. You know what? I'm rambling all over the place today, and the people that don't like sports like George, they're really lost today. Like, mm-hmm. like give him a compass and a road map, and take him to Chuck Heston's house. At least you know who that is. Yeah, Moses. Charlton Heston, Moses, Abraham, Jesus, all of these. You son of a yeah. Oh brother, miserable, the nasty, man. hateful, racist, obnoxious, disgusting. From my cold dead hands. Yeah, that'll be Arr. soon. By the way, Chuck, soon, soon coming to a mortuary near you. I bet you Michael Moore goes and dances on his grave. I'd love to see that. WQAM, hello. QAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, buddy? Great, Pally. Got one for your poll. Okay. Jim Brown of the Cleveland Browns. He was my favorite, man, number 32. He was the best. I don't care what anybody tries to give you a song to dance. He was the greatest of all time. Not a good human being. He was the smartest of them all. No. Tend to be a little on the violent side with those women, but, uh, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and one more thing, you mentioned Herb Score. You remember him? Yeah, of course. Okay, great. He's a great. I'm from Cleveland, so uh, you he bring got up hit. Some, uh, Don't some... you remember Gil McDougal hit a line drive and hit him in the head, and his career yep. was never the same it, after that. Never was the same. Yeah, cross-eyed him a little bit, didn't it? There you go. Have a great All day, right, thanks, pal. You too, he's, buddy. He's Love started you. looking like uh, who's that cross-eyed bitch on Channel 10? Christy Krueger. He started looking like that. Who's the actress? I can never think of her name. Don't tell me because I know it's a very easy name to think of. The cross-eyed one. Uh, yeah, the you, actress, you better tell me. Or the newscasteress. No, the actress. Which one? Oh, come on. Which one? I'm thinking of three. Well, give me the names. Uh, Karen Black. That's it. All right. Well, there's two other cross-eyed actresses? Well, Sandy Duncan doesn't really count. Nah, come on. Uh, it's Karen Black of, is, I mean, it has uh, a will is of really... Its own. Who? It has a will of its own, that eye. Yeah. So sometimes... Five, <laughs> six, seven, oh, five, sixty, pound, how did we get to that? Pound five. Well, Herb Score, man, he got hit in the head on a lion drive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Off the bat of Gil McDougal. Those are the days, baby, when we really had some sports. What you got now is a bunch of water. I just read the thing in the paper because I forgot all about it, about Denver beating uh, Kansas City 3-10 to 10 last night. That, that, that's embarrassing. It goes to show the league is so watered down. It's one thing to have parity. It's another thing to have mediocrity. On any given day, it's not, it's not a question of any team can win on a given day. On any given day, a team can look like crap. They can just stink the joint out. Just pathetic. And the Sun Sentinel has taken a poll that I find so typical of South Florida, man, so amusing. You will laugh your ass off. You want to hear what it is? All right. Probably not. Well, I'll tell you anyway. Let me find it. The poll is, if 
about the Dolphins. Are they for real, or are they like uh, be lucky to finish 500? Where the hell is that thing? Maybe it's on the sports section. So last time I looked at it, 73% were saying, oh, yeah, they're for real. They beat two of the three best teams in the league, and they're going to kick ass. They're going to be great. Yeah, oh, there it is. 72.6%, yes, they beat two of the top teams in the league, and they'll only improve. 27.4% know they have many flaws and be hard-pressed to finish 500. You were right. About? I didn't want to hear what the problem oh. was. No, but, but it just goes to show you how consistently uh, the people in that town, man, they just don't confuse them with the facts, okay? Year after year after year, it's the same old tired song. Oh, we're smelling Super Bowl and Cigarettos on air on, you know, talking to the acting like a silly goose, which he is, Tony Cigaretto. Eleven Chicago priests removed from parishes. There he goes again with that uh, stuff. Good. Eleven priests suspected of sexual misconduct with minors more than 20 years ago have been barred from clerical work, the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Chicago said yesterday. The men cannot present themselves as priests, engage in public ministries, or act as an agent of the Archdiocese, although they haven't been removed from the priesthood, said Chancellor Jimmy Lago. Lago would not disclose specific allegations of the priest's names or parishes. The eleven were among a group of 14 priests whose alleged sexual misconduct was forwarded to Vatican officials two years ago by Cardinal Francis George. Never trust a guy named Francis unless it's Francis O'Hare. Archdiocese officials said one of the priests has died. Two other cases will be decided by pending ca- canon- canonical trials. I bet you never saw that word in print in your life. Sure. You did? Canonical. Read it all the time. Yeah, hell you do. <laughs> Read all these priest here. stories. Canonical, my ass. I'll go get the code. The Vatican studied the cases last year and authorized George to conduct a review that included opinions from advocates for the priest and advisors. I wonder if they read the advocate there at the uh, rectory. They write it. Cardinal George has determined, based on the information presented, that sexual misconduct did occur. The sexual abuse, which allegedly took place 20 to 30 years ago in all the cases, was reported to both the parishes and civil authorities. The statute of limitations has expired in all cases. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Just another bunch of isolated incidents there in Chicago. A bunch of desperate pedophile priests molesting like crazy. And now that this new uh, Nazi pope, this uh, this uh, Pope Ratfink, mm-hmm. isn't that his name, Ratfink? Not singer. Now that they got this thing in there with, oh, no more, no more new gay priests. Well, what the hell, yeah. <laughs> gay, yeah. I noticed they didn't say, well, we're going to clean house because that would take a long, long time. This is Neil Rogers. Talk about a crowded house. This is 560 QAM. Six at five sixty WQAM. Somebody says on the facts here. How could we forget Greg Lucanus? You got that? A Greg Lucanus? Yeah, spelled either way. And as long as we're going to put him on here, what about Mark Spitz? What do you win? Like six gold medals at the Olympics in Mexico City, like a hundred years ago. Mark Spitz. Then he became a dentist. Okay. So if you want to get drilled, either go see Greg Lucanus or Mark Spitz. <laughs> at any rate, let's. Uh, you going to put Mark Spitz on there or not? It's so up to you. We're Josh. Doing it. You I got want. it. All depending on how depressed you are about your uh, carcinoma. Now, did we ever uh, change Joe Lewis, or is it still... Uh, yeah, yeah, curious. we changed it. Oh, look at that. Nice going, Eric. Okay, he's a little slow. He put a couple of them bologna and Swiss sandwiches aside, just, just long enough to change the spelling on that. 
So what do we got so far? Let's read the list down so we don't get a whole lot of repeats. 570 votes. Who is your all-time favorite athlete? Dan Marino, 146. Nobody can touch Danny, and quite frankly, who'd want to? I hate sports, 107. Mickey Mantle, 43. Michael Jordan, 37. Michael, if I have to hear that Michael crap one more time, you know, that, that's the one thing that bugged bug, uh, That plus the fact that they covered up his suspension from the league for the one year that he supposedly went to play minor league baseball. Remember that? Oh, come on. That wasn't a suspension. Josh, what do you mean? He, he actually played minor league baseball. That's what I'm saying. Sarasota, wasn't it? I don't remember. He was terrible. Well, okay, because he uh, sat out a season. I don't think he sat out at all. I think there was some gambling thing involved there. That, that was the rumors. And then, of course, remember his daddy? Uh, they found him on the side of the road, dade somewhere in Jersey or somewhere. Remember yeah. that? Yes. Some really suspicious in that whole deal. But nevertheless, don't talk about such stuff. Muhammad Ali, 35. Babe Ruth, 26. Willie Mays, 21. Bobby Orr, 19. Wayne Gretzky, 13. Needle Nose. Oh, somebody hit him. Go cry. Go to the bench and cry, Wayne. Shaq, 12. Tom Brady, 11. That's the man right there. Magic Johnson, 10. Bob Greasy, 10. Roberto Clemente, 8. Arriba. Arriba. Mario Lemieux, 8. Uh, Tiger Woods, 8. Too much. Jim Mandich, Mad Dog's right on Tiger's ass. He's got seven. Larry Bird, five. Hey, Larry, you turd. Lance Armstrong, five. George Armstrong don't have any. There's Daryl Sittler. You know, Mike, putting on a Maple Leaf jersey for me was the greatest moment. There's Rick Vive. Uh, let's see. Lance Armstrong, five. O.J. Simpson, four. Yogi Berra, four. Dick Buckus, four. Uh, Larry Zonka. Zonk's got three. Nice going, Zonk. Got rescued there last week. Damn near died. Uh, Jackie Robinson, three. Billy Smith, three. Johnny Bowers got three. Jim Brown's got a pair. He was great, man. He was so good, it was scary. Lou Gehrig, two. Joe DiMaggio. Jolton Joe's got two. Thinking of him uh, being in the same room, much less in the same bed with Marilyn Monroe, is so scary. It's just, uh, oh. Well, how about the other ones? Joe Namath, two. Uh, yeah, like Arthur uh, Treacher right. or whatever. Arthur uh, Miller. Right. Yeah, she probably would have done Arthur Treacher. She just uh, was into ugly guys. She Anybody. Them all. Anybody. Boog Powell, two. Sugar Ray Leonard, two. Lyle Alzado's got a pair. He's still schmearing it. Thurman Munson won. Carl Yastrzemski won. Jesse Owens won. Walter Payton won. Sandy Payton don't have any, bitch. Ted Williams won. Glenn Rice won. Mike Tyson won. Joe Lewis won. Barry Bonds has got one. Josh's vote. No, somebody else. And no votes yet for Mark Spitz, Greg Lucenis, John McEnroe, Roger Clemens, Ernie Banks, Jeff Gordon, Jim Thorpe, or Brian Piccolo. No votes for Ernie Banks? Oh, my God. What is with you people, huh? We must not have any Chicago people out there. Probably not. How about Ryan Sandberg? How about Mark Grace? What about Greg Maddox? He just turned 96. How about those Marlins, by the way? Oh! Is it official now? They lost 4 nothing last night. Are they, uh, did Houston win, or is it uh, still... No, one more before it's official. <laughs> and we'll have that for you tonight. There's a reason to tune in. We got the Mo Meister at 2. You got Mad Dog at 4. 6.30 Marlins on Drek, and then at 7.05. The Washington Nats will eliminate the Florida Marlins from any possible playoff uh, wild card hopes, and Eddie K follows the baseball game. A.J. Burnett, he was showing the door. Don't let it hit you in the ass on the way out. Troublemaker, big mouth. But Hank says uh, he had Jack McKeon on this morning. Old Jack says he may just come back again next year. He may fool them all. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, yes, I am. Will you please put a couple of things. Could, could you put on John Elway, please? He's, John Elway, okay. He, he's a great uh, football player. And he has a Super Bowl ring or two to show for it. Yes, he does. Two consecutive ones. That is correct. Incidentally, you had a caller earlier. They're called Lyle Alzado, a Raider. Lyle Alzado began his career as a professional football player at the Denver Broncos, and he fought an exhibition fight with uh, Cassius Clay, excuse me, Muhammad Ali. I don't know how many people right. are aware of that. But there anyway, you go. thank you so much. Incidentally, and he's been watching this. Uh, these guys are raking this poor Brown fellow over the coals. Yeah, I feel so sad for Brownie, not... Yeah, it's just, it's just a waste of time, you know. It's just uh, window dressing. Just they put on a dog and pony show. Yeah, it's, uh, agreed. But I mean, they're they're getting some they're getting some licks in. I mean, he, this is his proudest moment, admittedly. But he looks bad. Good, good. Well, you know, you know what Chuck Meyer used to say at QAM: Just lick him. Have a great day, Pally. Yeah, man. Okay. And that what Chuck said? That was All before time. he started doing those great phoners, uh, those interviews on the morning show. And if I would have just supported it, he'd have had a forty share. It's all your fault. That show sucked, Chuck. A lot of work went into that show. WQA, you never noticed. QAM, hello. Hi, this is Robert. You could go ahead and put uh, Reggie White on there. Reggie White, all right. That scamble soup man, that's the best. All right. Okay. It's Reggie White. We've got several bits about Reggie White. Not too complimentary, by the way. Reggie White for scamble soup. By the yeah. way, yeah. There's a fart sound in this bit. I, I'm not playing it. Oh, okay. 
Just I, I just played a little bit of it there, and then well, I played that other one. I started to, just a little tease. Did I play the Jeff Gordon is gay bit? Of course not. Yeah, yeah. why not? Well, I got even well, better news. What's that? Um, Inside Radio just called. They should stop faxing him. Woo! All right. So in other words, they acknowledged your. Now did Tom Taylor call personal? Or he had somebody no, call. No, he had some chick call. Good, because I'm sure he's not. Obviously, he's not the one that's faxing this stuff. Good. Thanks a lot, Josh. You're the best man. That thing is in the mail. I'm going to go out and get you that movie. I'm going to get all George told me this morning, don't get hospital for him because he won't like it. Don't get him any more movies. See, George is not your friend. He pretends to be your friend. If he was your friend, you'd have that big screen TV already that HD That's said. Right. I thought he's been talking about This is how back. I hate him. Yeah. Just, just like uh, my friend Dave told me, George talks behind my back. He talks behind your back. Right. I think that maybe Mo had a point about uh, George. That's right. <laughs> I've been telling people you were a faggot for years now. Yeah. I think Mo had a point about you. You know what? But he did the right thing. <laughs> he backed off because, uh, yeah. oh, God. You know, seriously, I, I would make the effort of writing the book, not to make any money because it wouldn't sell that many copies, but just for the satisfaction of putting it down in print so people would, maybe somebody might believe it. The stuff that's gone on there these last eight years, forget about IOD, forget about Disney puking in the wastebasket, all the other good stuff, but just just the stuff these last eight years on this supposed radio station it, it is absolutely unbelievable. Believable. It's amazing. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neely. Yes, sir. How about Joe Namath? I uh, sent him a little while ago. I don't know if we put him on there. I guess we didn't put him on yet. Okay, bye. We're, we're waiting to see if he could still play because the Jets need a quarterback. Did you, you didn't put Joe Namath on there yet? Yeah, I did. Uh, did you got any, oh, he's got three votes. That's, uh, well, maybe this guy don't have a computer, okay? Maybe he's hanging out with Hank. 5670560. Colin, your favorite oh. athlete of all time. What? By the way, speaking of Hank, I went out to the uh, magic room here during the uh, last break or whenever it was. And you were like in twin stalls there side by side? Not exactly. Five by each? Nothing quite that fun. No, I passed oh. Hank in the hall, and he was listening. And he reminded me that it was on his show that Carl Yaskrimski was on. And uh, so there. So I was sitting in on Hank's show training when I met Carl. So there's the, the rest of the story. Well, I'll, I'll be dang. Five, six, seven, eight. Did he also say, boy, Gary's an a-hole? I bet you mentioned that a few more Not times. Not on that particular occasion. but I, no, we, are, we already I know, know that, yeah. Hank. We know how that's how he feels. WQAM, hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, this is QAM? Uh, sounds like us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have a name for your poll. Okay. Journey. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's get it on there right away. I want to change my vote. Journey. They couldn't sing, but they sure could play. Here's one. Cal Ripken says Maurice, loyal listener for 100 years. Thanks, Maurice. Or is that Morris? Uh, maybe that's Morris Gibb, do you think? Could be. Or maybe it's Andy Gibb. Let's see. Your thoughts on a man, uh, who's this from, who can bring the Democrats back to the White House that says his name is Al Gore. You know, I'm thinking that uh, the other day I was thinking about that. Get out. What? Were you? No, just the coincidence of you thinking about it, and then we get this fact. Well, they were talking about this the other day, the fact that he is uh, maybe positioning himself to um, for another comeback. Okay. It says he's been packing people in his speech appearances. He's been packing it. He is and always has been anti-war, popular now in people polls. People finally understanding and listening to a conversation regarding global warming. Bush screwed him over. They stole the election. And now Al, Green, uh, Al Gore can scream, are you better off now than you were eight years ago? Americans love a comeback kid. And he's got a website, Al Gore slash dash 08.com. Now, what does that say? Remember Lockbox? Yeah, really funny then, but not so funny now. Very good. Thanks a lot, Pally. I'm all for that. I, I think Al Gore could uh, beat anybody they put up, including uh, uh, John McCain with his cheek all uh, puffed up there, or Rudy Giuliani, who's got his uh, chief of police hanging around his neck like a uh, albatross. Remember albatross? Harry Harvey, Stanley Dancer. Huh? Bob Greasy and Joe Mean Green. Well, we got Bob Greasy on there. Mean Joe Green for the poll, okay? Probably some Steeler schmuck. What about Terry Bradshaw? They don't come no dumber than Terry. Huh? He loves his sushi. What do you say? Let's get Terry Bradshaw on there, even though I hate him like poison. I can't make it personal. Can't make it personal. This is business, and I don't want to make it personal, okay? So you got a Terry Bradshaw, Mean Joe Green. Got it? We got it. We got a list of 50,000 athletes on here today, man. There's going to be so many jock straps hanging on that website, it's going to smell really bad. Rancid. 11.56. What about Tim Horton, man? He makes a hell of a donut. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, you know something seriously, being here most of the time, it, it's like I'm on a different planet. I'm in a different world. It's just the, the whole the whole mentality is just so different. It's, uh, I don't know, just like that piece you saw in Bowling for Columbine where he came to Canada and they talk about all the guns that are around but nobody's shooting each other. And he went to Sarnia, Ontario, population 80,000. And they said, well, when's the last time you had a murder here? Oh, we had one about five years ago in Windsor. You had one here? No, not in a long time. It's just, uh, uh, although we do have some shootings now. We got some folks with guns who shouldn't have them. I don't want to get into it. 
How did you sleep last night? In a recent national survey by the National Sleep Foundation, fewer than half Americans report getting a good night's sleep most nights. One of the primary reasons is not having a comfortable, supportive mattress like a great new Simmons Beautyrest Queen set from our good friends at Dollar Mattress. This Simmons Beauty Rest features individually pocketed coils so you won't feel your partner moving during the night and now priced at only 599 bucks for a limited time only. So pick up that phone and call 1-800-MATTRESS right now and tell them you want the Neal deal that Simmons Beauty Rest for just 599 bucks. Plus, a portion of this deal and every dollar mattress purchase will be donated to Hurricane Katrina Relief. And when you call 1-800-MATTRESS, you still get same-day delivery all across South Florida. And you choose from the deepest selection. You pick the date and time for delivery. Any two-hour window that fits your schedule, you pick it. Noon to 2, 1 to 3, etc. And Dollar Mattress shows up on time 99.7% of the time. I've used them for years. They always do you a great job, and you can depend on it, too. So if you want to make the easiest piece of shopping you've ever done, just pick up that phone right now and call 1-800-MATTRESS or log on to their website, mattress.com. Guarantee yourself a stupendous night's sleep for years to come on a bed from Dollar Mattress. 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. Leave off the last S because it stands for Stanley Dancer. This is Neil Rogers. This is 562 AM. I am Frau Eliana Ross Leitman, and I like scrubbing my smelly gorilla ass with soap made from jewels and listening to the Neil Roche Amunista Hour. <laughs> Some big frustrations, a big problem with Kim Jong Two. In his Asian nation, he's golden bombs more than a few. We want no bad relations. In fact, we gotta be real nice. Cause with no hesitation, they'd love to pick a fight. The want no provocations in the game with such high stakes. The Bush administration wants to stop what they create. That's a hell of a mistake. Oh no, things are really tough. Dealing with North Korea. Iraq is bad enough. Now we're dealing with North Korea. Say our best bet is to cut a little and just stroke ya. Or we might just regret dealing with North Korea. 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 Oi! 1203 at 560 WQAM. Happy Tuesday to you. September 27th, I noticed a lot of great athletes picking your favorite athlete. We're number 27. Daryl Sittler, Frank Mahovlich. Who else? That's about it. Any football players, great football players, were 27? I don't think so. Not that I can think of. Uh, no, not great no. that I can think of. In fact, the great number, I guess, was 32. Jim Brown, uh, 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 what's his name? Gil Sears. The Juice. Was Walter Payton 32? 34. 34, that's right. 34 was also Bobby Mitchell on the same Browns team with uh, the great... Jim Brown. Boy, that was some team. They had a crappy quarterback, though, Milt Plum. Well, what a fruit. Um, wait till you, this is going to frost your ass. A man who immigrated from Kenya, can you believe it, to the U.S. found prosperity beyond his expectations on the day he became a U.S. citizen, George. Yep. Something for you to think about. How did he do that? Shortly after Moses Bittock of West Des Moines took the oath of citizenship on Friday, last Friday, he discovered he had a $1.89 million winning ticket from the Iowa Lottery's Hot Lotto game. It's almost like you adopted a country and then they netted you 1.8 million, he said Monday as he cashed in his ticket. Doesn't happen anywhere, I guess, only in America. And Jay and the Americans, Jay Black was singing, only in America. But I said he took the citizenship oath at the federal building in Des Moines Friday, then went shopping with his family. They stopped at a gas station to check his lottery ticket from the September 21st drawing. For some reason, I'm calm, he said his wife, Leonita, screamed. She was screaming over there. The top 40 officer at the Iowa Correctional Institute for Women in Mitchellville said he doesn't know exactly what he'll do with the winnings, but a college fund for the couple's four-year-old daughter, Mindy, is the top priority. Here I thought Mindy was only on the guiding light and only came back for uh, cameos once in a while. The doc chose to receive his winnings in 25 annual payments. Uh, about Oh, see, this is the American way again, about 52920 a year for 25 years after taxes. Right. Oh. You see, they don't do that here, eh? They don't play that game. You win a lotto here, they, uh, you know... Give you a check, the whole yeah. amount, no tax, no games, no BS, and they just give you a check. Any kind of uh, gambling winnings. In some lump. I mean, Not lump that I lump. have any, but nevertheless. 
That, that story reminds me of it. It's like, you know, people have played a lot of heavy duty and they've worked their guts out. They, they, maybe they get like, uh, you know, six bucks or ten bucks and it never hit anything. It's like sitting at the uh, casino playing the slots all day long and you're pouring hundred dollar bill after a hundred. You're pouring thousands in there and all the regulars are there and they're all losing and losing, waiting to hit something. And then some schmuck comes up and plays the, a good machine next to you, man, and sticks a twenty dollar bill in. And bada bing, here's like uh, three grand or something. Bastards. Spigs in uh, Parker, Colorado. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce that. Spigs, Spigs. I don't know. Spig. He says, "What about the greatest uh, athlete ever to play in South Florida? Pavel Bure. Jesus, get with it." He said, "Lovey and smooches." Well, hey, you know that's true. He is, a, and, and we did take that poll: the greatest athlete ever to play in South Florida. And the uh, Dan Marino beats him hands down your pants because people don't know from Pavel Bure. Okay, they don't know Pavel Bure from Pavel Dimitri from uh, Pavel the dog. Okay, they haven't got any idea what that's all about. That's South Florida for you, man, although they do like Bobby Orr. Thank God for that. Danny, they're not going to come close to Danny. They just, they're just they obsessed. Let's, let's build monuments to Dan Marino, okay? 156 votes, and Mickey Mantle's got 46. Wow. Even the Mad Dog ain't in the same league with that. What about Joe Rose? What just about because him? he's over there on the evil side with the evildoers doesn't mean we can't put Joe Rose in there, although Journey just got a vote. Joe Lewis still has only one. That's because that, that would take a... And Jesse Owens. Old farts. I mean, real, real old. Even older than me. And that's, that's ancient. Would know from Joe Lewis. WQAM, hello. Yeah, Neil, I got two for your poem. Okay. Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence and, Taylor. Good old LT. And Pele. And Pele. Arriba, arriba, Pele. Arriba, okay, thanks, arriba. Pele. Okay, thanks. You got it, Pele, the great soccer player. Yeah. And uh, LT. We got that OJ LT bit. Yeah. And what is that called? Cocaine called, dash. No, it's called drunk. Well, we have a different one. OJLT show. Sports Code Radio 560 2 a.m. We get the OJ Symphony Wallace Taylor Show. <laughs> we have an LT and uh, Michael Irvin then. With, with intro by uh, Lenny Martez, no doubt. Hey, that Lenny, man, is he a, bra- a broadcaster or what? Just amazing to me. Line 9, WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. You are the only thing I miss about South Florida. Well, what does that tell you? What a horrible place it is. Thank Neil God for the Internet. Neil God! Exactly. Uh, I have an addition to your list. Where, where are you calling from, just out of curiosity? I am in Columbus, Georgia. Columbus, Georgia? Ooh, that's kind of scary. Well, my $275,000 house here would cost about 600000 in plantation. Right. So. Like I said, that's where the good life is, man, the affordable good life in Columbus, Georgia. And I got an well, that's not close land. to Aintree, is it? Uh, no, it's uh, about an hour and 45 minutes south of Atlanta. Oh, I see. Because if you're too close to Aintree, you might get a visit from the Beasleys one of these days. Oh, okay, what, what do you got for us, Pally? Uh, it's not a person. It's a team. The 1980 U.S. hockey team. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I guess you don't agree. I mean, well, it's not a question whether I agree. It just isn't the answer to our poll today. It's like saying uh, uh, Swiss cheese. You know, it just it's fine, but it just don't fit, you know? All right. Do you, well, believe, do you believe in miracles? Uh, yes, I do, and I okay. remember it well. Say hi to Al. I sure will. Have a nice day. Okay. Do you believe in miracles, George? No. Oh. Well, you should, for crying out loud. I know that song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you believe in magic by the Loving Spoonful? The Love and Spoonful? You the Love and Spoonful. Do you believe in magic? Sure. No, this song. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I believe in miracles. Horrible. Get really. that off. I hate that. 5670560. Oh, That's a spastic song. Pound 560 on the Verizon <laughs> and Singular Wireless Lines. I just might save my whole pile here for tomorrow. We're having such a good time with these 80 million calls. Because this is pretty painless. Although the guy from, well, it goes to show you, he lived in cheap in Columbus, Georgia, but it does affect your mind. You know, like, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, gr- Gruyere. Red. WQAM, hello. Hey, what about that one baseball coach, Norm Kent? Oh, yeah, he's the best. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a wannabe Yay. baseball player. <laughs> yeah. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes. Hey, how you doing today? Great show. Okay. Um, I would have to say, uh, what happened to those two soldiers you were talking about that got blown up in Iraq the other day? They did. They died? Yeah. Uh, number 27, John Tonelli. He's a good one. I wouldn't put him on the poll, though. New York Islanders, John Tonelli. I wouldn't put him on the poll. I would, no, I would more, neither. I would put Mike Palmatier on there before I put him. Oh, my God. Mike Palmatier. <laughs> and, uh, 
I think that uh, Howard Dean needs to come out with a slogan. Like, you remember how they had the 9-11 scare things to get Bush in office? They should have pictures of the flood and then Condi on Broadway, and they should say, while you were drowning, they were out clowning. Yeah, oh. that's, I like that. And shopping for shoes. Don't forget those great $7,000 shoes, man. Yeah, it's all good. Neil, Hostile great later. show. And uh, looking forward to hockey season. Peace. Say goodbye. Okay, we love the Maple Leafs. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. I found out who the new coach of Ottawa was. I haven't been paying too much attention. It really distressed me. B.M., the spokesman, even George knows the spokesman, Brian Murray. What about him? The spokesman, he's the uh, coach of the Ottawa Senators. And they're going to be damn good. They're kicking the crap out of the Leafs in the uh, exhibition this season. And it looks like they got one hell of a team. And wouldn't that be something? Not thanks to him, though. It's thanks to John Schmuckler, the GM, who got all these guys. To Minnesota back uh, two years ago in the for Frozen Pond. There's that Leafs TV, baby. Let's put some of that audio on there. That'll kill us uh, for good. Anyway, old BM Brian Murray, the spokesman. We won't have him to kick around no more. The spokesman. It's uh, 12 minutes after, and the Panthers are going to be good, too, but I don't see anybody uh, paying any attention or having any interest. The uh, hockey season starts in a week. Geldy will be, uh, I don't think we got a Geldy, I guess, is resting up his voice for the beginning of hockey season. Wouldn't you think? Okay. Well, I would think so. He's like probably, uh, you know, mm, he's like standing in front of the mirror every day, mm, intoning and having some funny mm, tea. In that voice all straightened out <laughs> for hockey season. Here's your last chance to save thousands on a brand new Ford from Armstrong Ford at Homestead. I'm doing the wrong spot. You know how you do it? You go to see Chuck Alfieri. All right. Huh? Wait, what? I said if you want to save a lot of money on your hair, go to see Chuck Alfieri. If you want to save a lot of money on a Ford, go to Armstrong Ford, but that's in the next hour. I'm, I'm in the wrong hour. No, it was the right spot. Yeah, it was. Somebody just faxed me the log in the wrong order. Or probably I just put I just put my pile together in the wrong order. I, I don't know. I'm under a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. Don't ask that's me right. why. Don't worry I'll just make up an answer. Like I started to say only moments ago before Chuck stuck his uh, hair in the middle, Here's your last chance to save thousands on a brand new Ford from Armstrong Ford Homes that they've always treated everybody like family, and now they want to extend an offer to you to join their family. Nationwide, Ford has extended their Ford family plan a few more days to September 30th. About 30, man. And right now at Armstrong Ford Homestead, you get the same great pricing that every Ford Motor Company employee and their families get. Not only do you get employee family pricing, but you also get Armstrong Ford's exclusive tires and batteries full life program. How can you beat that? And for a limited time with any new car purchase, you also get a color TV for free. All of these things. So what are you waiting for? Pick up the phone right now. Call David Rich at 305 247 5112. And talk to him about this fantastic Ford family plan. You won't get a better deal on a Ford anyplace else in town. No bait and switch, no phony deals. And this fantastic offer is only waiting for you at Armstrong Ford Homestead. You'll find them at US 1 at Southwest 307th Street, just 20 minutes south of the 836. Check them on the web, armstrongcars.com, and then give David a call at 305 247 5112. He'll tell you all about this great Ford family plan. Drive a few miles extra and save really a ton of money. A Schmidt load at Armstrong Ford of Homestead. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Stay in Miami Town. Oh! At 560 WQAM. I got some exciting news for you. I'm here, George. All right. Not really exciting, and you probably won't care, but it's exciting to me. Made my day. Nibbling on sponge cake. Watching my yacht break. Those Key West presidents left the turmoil. I'm dying over here. Strumming my six string. While my front porch swings. Those swirling clouds are beginning to boil. Evacuation time in Ritaville. I'm saying cause I don't mind the assault. Some people claim I should run from hurricanes, but I love. Breeze and sea water salt. I don't know the reason. At hurricane season, why people start freaking and leaving a fright. So what? It ain't sunny, and winds are 120. The weather's just perfect for flying a kite. I'm dying over here. Evacuation time in Ritaville. You fairy. 
alerting people to run away from it all. But I'm gonna stay through this Rita hurricane, cause I love, oh my god, freezing seawater salt. So my package has been delivered. How do you like that? Remember I said right. this morning how great UPS is? I just was tracking it. I tell you, that's kind of uh, interesting when you track stuff like from uh, UPS or FedEx online. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, you know, not, not exciting, but it's kind of interesting. You don't think so? No, it is interesting. I just got a package handed to me, too, just since uh, you said that. Really? And yeah. whose is it? I, it says my name on it, but it doesn't say where it's from. Oh, well, what's in it? Sorry, mine's one of What's in the package? Anyway, somebody faxes, and I mentioned his name before. Oh, Steve Friedman. All right, let's hear it for Steve. Oh, this isn't the same Steve. Or maybe it is this, I don't know. Oh, this guy's in Louisville, Kentucky. Anyway, good Jewish boy, Steve says. A favorite athlete, Alkaline Detroit Tigers. It's not Alkaline, okay? He didn't make no batteries, Josh. Alkaline. I mentioned it before, and you didn't put him on there, and it's my fault because I didn't like press it. Al Kaline, first time the Tigers offered him a $100,000 contract, he turned it down saying he didn't think he was worth that much. A real pro, 110% effort every game. You're absolutely correct. Great outfielder, great hitter, Al Kaline. A real credit to the human race. Got it? We got it. Now, speaking of amusing, not that it's J-E-T. I told you that S and J-E-T-S, Jet stands for suck. The yeah, Jet suck. Lately. And this article is just verifies what the guy said before, because I, I almost didn't want to believe it. It's so amusing and sad. It's Shades of 99 with the role reversed. Vinny Testiverde is returning to the Jets and will attempt to lead them out of one of the darkest periods in their history. In a 2 p.m. news conference, Testy Verde, 41, will be reintroduced to the team in City that witnessed his triumphant 1998 season immediately following the 99 opener, which his season-ending Achilles injury crushed the Jets' Super Bowl hopes. How fitting, then, it says that Testy Verde will attempt to pick up the pieces for the Jets who have lost Chad Pennington and Jay Fiedler for the season with shoulder injuries. When you lose Jay Fiedler, mister, you got some real tourists. The Jets also worked out Doug Johnson, Jesse Palmer, and Jonathan Quinn. Did they may sign one of them, too. How do you like that? The Jets, J-E-T-S-S, as in suck. So, what does it mean when someone sends you a tombstone? What is it? A tombstone. What do you mean by that? It's a pizza? Sonic, Sonic. Is it a pizza? No, it's a Sonic tombstone. Yeah, I think it probably means... I'm dying over here. You think it's a threat? Well, who is it from? It doesn't say. <laughs> oh, maybe. I know who probably sent it to you. Do, 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 do. Me? Here's the poll. Who's your all-time favorite athlete? Dan Marino, 161. I hate sports, 118. Well, too bad. We like this today. It's a good perversion and diversion. Mickey Mendel, 48. Muhammad Ali, 44. Michael Jordan, 44. Michael. That's old Michael to you. Uh, Babe Ruth, 28. Willie Mays, 22. Bobby Orr, 22. Greatest hockey player who ever lived by far. Shaq, 16. Who is it? Shaq! Yeah. Wayne Gretzky, 15. Tom Brady, 12. Looking back. There's his number 12, too. How do you like that, Josh? Very impressive. He was. He is. Bob Greasy, 11. Larry Bird, 10. Magic Johnson, 10. Mario Lemieux, 10. How about, uh, since everybody and their brother, all the uh, queen, I mean, all of us are talking about Rob Marciano, the weather guy on CNN, all the ladies and those of us who may be, uh, how about Rocky Marciano, the great boxer? Okay. You don't think? I do. Before your time, but he sure was great. He was, uh, he was uh, huge with his cauliflower ears. Robert, uh, Roberto Clemente, 9. Tiger Woods, 9. Yeah, some athlete. Jim Mandel. And, you know, you were joking before uh, about putting uh, drivers and jockeys on here, George. But I'll tell you one thing. They're a hell of a lot better, better athletes than golfers. If you're going to really <laughs> use the word. Huh? If, yeah, if you're going to use the word athlete. Right. I mean, golfers are athletes like I'm a brain surgeon. Jim Mandel, 8. O.J. Simpson, 8. And Lance Armstrong, 8. What a trio. Yogi has got 5. Dick Butkus, 5. Jim Brown, 4. Jackie Robinson, four. Greg Lusain is three. Thurman Munson, three. Willie Joe has got three. He's coming back. He's going to be the quarterback for the Jets when uh, old Vinny can't cut it. You know, I, I hate to say this to you. I, I never thought Vinny was any good, Josh. I mean, he, you know. Well, he really never was. In the no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a hur hurricane guy you're talking about. Hey, Don't be knocking hey. him. He's no Gino Toretta. Lyle Alzado, three. Larry Zonka, three. Billy Smith, three. Johnny Bowers got three. Old number one. Uh, Journey, you've got a pair. Lou Gehrig, two. Joe DiMaggio, two. Ernie Banks, two. Ted Williams, a pair. Boog Powell, two. No relation to the Boogster. Sugar Ray Leonard, two. Pele has got one. Mean Joe Green, one. John Elway, one. Mark Spitz got one. There you go. Carly Stremski, one. Jesse Owens, one. Walter Payton, one. Jeff Gordon, one. Glenn Rice, one. Mike Tyson, one. Joe Lewis, one. Barry Bonds, one. None. Rocky Marciano just went on. Al Kaline has none. 
Lawrence Taylor, none. Joe Rose, none. Pavel Burry has none. Terry Bradshaw, Cal Ripken, John McEnroe, Roger Clemens, Jim Thorpe, and Brian Piccolo have none. Although we did like Piccolo's restaurant on the beach back in the day. That's when Jim Alton tried to get me to go home with him one night, and I said, I don't think so, Jim. He was trying to pick up the waiter. He's dead now, Jim Alton, so I think we can say that. I'm pretty sure he's dead, and even if he's not dead, I still send it. 5670560, pound 560 on the Verizon Singular wireless line. It was a good dinner, though. WQAM, hello. Yeah, can I talk to Neil, please? Speaking. Oh, Neil, how yeah. you doing? Pretty good. Hey, uh, I, got, I, I, you know, I want to vote for Roberto Clemente, Neil. I mean, growing up as a kid... You know, I, I died in that tragic plane crash yes, he for did. humanitarian reasons. Yep. And you know, he was one of my favorite ball players. And uh, I'll tell you, he was never, never after a large salary. Always was a team, you know, player. Yeah. A big heart. So uh, mark me down for Roberto, and uh, I appreciate it. I'm very. We got you down, and Bob Prince says hi too. He's thinking, who? Oh, he's dead too. So we can't, uh, you know, he didn't care. 26 past noon at 560 WQ, and we got the Mo Man, do, 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 do. who the rumors are sent George a tombstone today. This is Neil Rogers. Did you start that rumor? This is yeah. 560 QAM. Yeah. Oh, there goes that audio, vault. Oh, don't tell me, okay? All right, we won't tell you. Lee Cow. Neil Rogers is right. The Cubs suck. New Orleans thought it had been spared the worst. And then two major levees broke and slowly the city filled with water. The city that sits below sea level is now under sea. Officials estimate that 80% of New Orleans is now underwater. The governor has been asking for everybody to say a prayer. I think we could probably do that for our friends sure. and uh, loved ones out there. Good morning, Last night we began this broadcast saying Katrina was bad, very bad. Last night we didn't know the half of it. We are still learning just how bad. What I saw today is equivalent to what I saw flying over the tsunami in Indonesia. There are places that are no longer there. Nighttime on the city of New Orleans. I mean, everything is just flooded. Everything, the whole city. There right there are some people being evacuated. We're hearing lots of stories of uh, folks lending aid to one another. Helicopters and rescue teams lifting people one by one, hundreds and hundreds in all from rooftops. And we're hearing lots of stories like that of people assisting one another. Just pray for them and... Uh... And for not just them, all the people down there. You know, we're, they're picking up the pieces. Through the Mississippi darkness, rolling down to the sea. Good morning, America, how are you? Said, don't you know me? I'm your native son. I'm the train that calls the city of New Orleans. Tonight I ask for your prayers for all those who grieve. Hurricane Katrina has brought out some of mankind's very best. I ask the American people to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. God bless. Abu Ghraib. 1232 at 560 WQM. He's uh, down there in Brownsville, brown nosing around El Presidente. Was it in Brownsville he was or uh, somewhere else? I don't know. Beaumont. I mean, I, Beaumont. I what, it begins with a B. What's with a B? He's somewhere in Texas. Buford. And he's got that. You know, remember we did the poll about what one word describes Bush the best? Yeah. I mean, I've got the definitive answer, and I don't think we even put it on there. You know what it is? Because I looked at him. They showed that clip of him being given the tour, the grand tour of all the devastating damage there in Beaumont. And you know what the word is? I give up. Pathetic. Oh. Yeah. Pathetic. Yeah. He, he really is. He's failed at everything he's ever done. You know, they spoon-fed him. They put him in the oil business, the baseball business. Every business he ever went into, he failed. And then they stole him two elections, and again he failed. Yeah, but why do you hate America? Former FEMA director Michael Brown told Congress today he made specific mistakes in leading the initial federal government response to Hurricane Katrina. But Brown also blamed state and local officials for government failures. Not that he wants to point the finger or anything like that or play the blame game. Brown told a special congressional panel that Louisiana Governor Kathleen Blankhead and New Orleans Mayor Ray Nagin were not coordinating their efforts and that he should have done more to persuade them to do so. He suggested that the FEMA agency had gotten a bum rap because many people incorrectly believes it serves as something of a federal rapid response force. 
FEMA is a coordinating agency. We're not a law enforcement agency, he said. Wait, wait, now wait till you hear this. This line will just make you do wild things in your pants. It is inherently impractical, totally impractical for the federal government to respond to every disaster of whatever size in every community across the country, Brown said. In other words, this one, no thing. Right. You know, every time somebody gets a hangnail, are we supposed to be there? That's right. Stand on your own two feet. It breaks my heart to think about the disasters we respond to as FEMA and to think about the disasters we also don't respond to, he added. Oh, my God. Democrats who want an independent investigation not under control of majority Republicans largely boycotted the hearing. At the end of the day, I suspect we'll find that government at all levels failed the people of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and the Gulf Coast. The committee chairman, Tom Davis, Republican of Virginia. Democrats mostly boycotted because they know it's just a whitewash, just a bunch of crap. Why even waste our time with this? 700 and some votes. We're not going to make a 1,000 today because we're not pushing for it, and plus we don't have enough names on there, which we will. we got 7-Eleven. Let's go there. Let's go get a big gulp. WQAM, hello. WQAM, hello. Yes. I was going to ask you. I was surprised Johnny Unitas isn't on that poll. Johnny Unitas, old number 19. You got him, man. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Johnny Unitas. How come he's not on there? Johnny U, huh? Yeah. These people that compare uh, Peyton Manning to uh, Johnny Unitas need mental help, okay? In fact, Peyton Manning... You notice how the uh, Colts don't score any points this season, Josh, and they're just getting by on defense? Are you saying that he's not good? Oh, no, he's good, but he's not no Johnny Unitas. There's this difference between good and great, okay? I mean, I, I happen to disagree with you, but... Do you think he's a great quarterback, Peyton Sandy, Peyton Manning? I'm pretty sure he set the record for touchdown passes last year. Last so, so what, and what did he win? Oh, you have to win a Super Bowl to be good. Well, you have to you have to win championships. You have to be in a big dance. Did he go to the Super Bowl? Did he even play in the Super Bowl? No. You better learn your Johnny United's history, mister, because you sure don't know it. You know Jimmy Orr from Bobby Orr. You better start uh, getting on the Gland Wagon. You better have Clarence sit you down and give you some uh, uh, sports history when you have some real boring spare time, when you're like watching The Hospital with George C. Scott. I'm going to go out and get it just to piss off George. All right, yeah. You I, I, I think he'll like it. I think he okay. will like it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch it again first myself, and then I'll then I'll decide whether I'll send it or not. Take its temperature. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick my thermometer in there and see if it's got a fever. WQAM, hello. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, I've got an addition for the poll. Uh, being a hockey fan, I'm surprised Bobby Hull isn't on there yet. Bobby Hull, old number nine. He was the man who really brought hockey to the to its you know to its peak in the late '60s and early '70s. And once he retired, the ratings went downhill. I mean, all I won't dispute that, but I think Bobby Hull really brought it. He was good. He could really shoot it, man. You know, and, well, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but Arnold Palmer is a very popular athlete, even though he is a golfer. And he taught me a lot of books if he were on the pole. Who is it, Arnold Palmer? Yeah, he would. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, he's a crusty old fart. We'll put him on there for you. Arnold Palmer and Bobby Hull, you got him? We got and him. And as long as we're putting Arnie on there, what about Jack Nicholas, huh? He's, uh, well, we'll see. He'll get votes. Especially in South Florida, he and his whole family will probably vote for him. You know, I, I don't want to go through the whole thing about golf again. It's just, it's just such a tremendous, incredible waste of time and money and effort, you know. And the crowd is all hushed, you know. And it just, it just it makes me nauseous. But it kills some good time, I guess, for some very bored people. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how about Mark Dufer, Tony Dorsett, Hulk Hogan, and Rick Flair? Anybody else? No, just them. Okay, just hey. those eight. You can't leave those. Uh, you can't leave out the no, I, man. I can't keep up. We have too many for me, okay? We don't want a list. We want one. Make up your mind, okay? Make up your mind. Who is your favorite all-time athlete? I could have given a list, you know. I could have said uh, a whole bunch of people. Frank Mahovlich and uh, all kinds. I could have put my buddy Ray Whitney on there. But I didn't. I voted for old Johnny Bauer because that's the ultimate answer. I could have put Francis O'Hare on there, another old guy, great driver at the Hazel Park in Northville and the Wolverine race. How old Francis O'Hare, boy, I cashed a lot of tickets on old Frank, long since dead. 72, man, there's an athlete, not some guy that uh, wanders around on the golf course like the Tiger and Arnie and Jack Nicholas, those blue-nosed a-holes, but nevertheless. That was good about Bobby Hull, though. That's a good one. Let's get a bunch of, let's get hockey intensive. No. We've got hockey season coming. No, 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 no. Let's get Rimmer on the phone. Have, uh, no. In fact, when I go on vacation in a couple of weeks, George is going to be doing a hockey show with Jeff Rimmer. Every day. <laughs> oh. WQAM, hello. Yes, hello. Yes. Uh, yes, I wanted to speak to Neil. Speaking. Uh, that's not Neil. It sure is. It looks like me. I just look down and it's mine. It's me. <laughs> I'm from Kitchener, Waterloo. Uh, Get to Waterloo. How's it going, eh? <laughs> it's going great, eh? But I live in Florida. I've been down here about 15 years now. 
I'll be damned. Yeah, I've been down here for a while. Anyway, well, we'll keep a space um, open for you just in case you change your mind. I have a joke for you. We don't do jokes. You don't do jokes? Oh, but it's a good joke. It's a hot no, we still, joke. We still don't do jokes. Have you got a name for our poll? Yes, Gary Cohen. Gary you know Cohen? Gary Cohen. Good looking at stocky. Gary Cohen, the jockey? The jockey, yeah. But Hank doesn't know who it is? Pardon? Gary Cohen, the jockey that was in Florida? Yeah, correct. That's okay, right. thanks. Thanks for that. See you around, eh? How's it going? Gary Cohen. I know his brother, Marty. Yeah. Good friend of yours? <laughs> That's got to be one of the most bizarre calls because I uh, keep... I, don't let me forget tomorrow on the crossover when Hank bring up that thing about Gary Cohen again. Who well, I'm sure it's probably not related to David Cohen, who's riding in California now, but... There he goes with hockey and horse racing. And we told you on the poll yesterday, the other day, man, we don't want to hear about hockey, horse racing, or homos, the three H's. No more of the three H's, okay? Isn't that what they said? Hockey was number one, horse racing number two, and Yay. homo talk was number three. This is Neil Rogers. This is Five There's no Herbie Castillo, I'll tell you that. Bush took responsibility after Michael Brown resigned. I bet you Brown has second thoughts about taking it in the behind. Where was FEMA? Broken levees, FEMA was nowhere in sight. FEMA! Even with warning, FEMA's boss wasn't bright. When the storm was over, water was everywhere. But the biggest disaster was that Mexico beat you there. They beat FEMA. No big contracts, they went to Halliburton. FEMA! Responds more quickly when it's rich people hurting. When it's rich people hurting. I'm dying over here. FEMA! 1246, you're going to pee in your pants when you hear this next thing I'm going to pass along to you. Well, right. the second thing. First, the poll. I hope not, because I really have to go. I should have gone during the break. Well, trust me, you will. You'll just, uh, you won't even have time to go. 745 vote. Who is your favorite? Well, why don't you go down and pee now while I do the poll? Oh, no, it's not that bad. Oh. Or just uh, dribble on the floor there. I got the wastebasket. You're all time, well, probably couldn't make this smell any worse in that studio from what you're telling me. Got that right. Uh, Dan Marino, 170. Nobody's going to touch Danny Boy with those real funky lips. Hall of Flamer man, Dan Marino. He could play. I hate sports, 123. 16.5% of the audience just like that. They don't like it. We want it. They don't want it. We like it. They don't like it. Michael Jordan is tied with Mickey Mantle, 49. Mohammed Ali, 47. He's right on both their ass. Babe Ruth, 31. Baby Root. Willie Mays, 22. Bobby Orr, 22. 19. Wayne Gretzky, 15. Larry Bird, 13. Tom Brady, old number 12, he's got 12. Roberto Clemente, Lance Armstrong, Bob Greasy, and Tiger Woods, 11 apiece. Magic Johnson and Mary Lemieux, 10 apiece. O.J. Simpson's got nine. Mad Dog's got eight. All right. Yogi and the Dick Buckus, six apiece. Jim Brown, five. Larry Zonka, five. Four each for Al Kaline, Pele, Journey, Lou Gehrig, and Jackie Robinson. Greg Lucanus, Thurman Munson, Joe Namath, Lyle Alzado, Billy Smith, and Johnny Bauer, three apiece. Pavel Bury, here are the ones with two. Pavel Bury, John Elway, Mark Spitz, Joe DiMaggio, Walter Payton, Ernie Banks, Ted Williams, Jeff Gordon, Boog Powell, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Barry Bonds. One apiece for Jack Nicholas, Johnny Yu, Lawrence Taylor, Mean Joe Green, Cal, uh, Cal Ripken, Carl Yastrzemski, Jesse Owens, Glenn Rice, Mike Tyson, and Joe Lewis. And no votes yet for Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Hulk Hogan? Where the hell did he come from? I don't know. I guess he snuck up on Josh? Him. That guy called it in. I put it on there. Hulk Hogan? The guy called in with like 900 votes. I heard like three of them. Oh, I see. It was one of them. Uh, Tony Dior said, these are all have none. Tony Dior said, Mark Duper, that's another one. He said, Arnold Palmer, Bobby Hall, Rocky Marciano. How about Rob Marciano? I'd vote for him. <clears throat> Joe Rose, Terry Bradshaw, John McEnroe, Roger Clemens, Jim Thorpe, and Brian Piccolo. All have got the big. Oh! How, that, that's kind of surprising. No votes for uh, Terry Bradshaw, isn't it? Why? Why is that surprising? Because he won a whole bunch of Super Bowls, uh, even though yeah, he's dumber than Sawdust with the uh, Steelers. We're here in Florida. They don't have any Steelers fans down here. The hell they don't. I haven't seen any. Your mama. No, she wasn't one. So anyway, here's the thing that I was going to make you uh, just... You, you, maybe you already know about it. About Kiss? No, what about him? Oh, here we go. Hang on tight. Hold All on right. loosely. Looking to immerse yourself in that southern rebel country music? No. 
South Florida's country music station, WKIS-FM KISS 99.9, is launching this week a high-definition radio station that will carry a mighty cry of what KISS marketing director Sandy Sloan calls a hell yeah attitude. Hell yeah. Yeah, Yeah, like that. With this format, you're just rocking out the whole time, Sloan said. We'll be playing a lot of that southern rock that doesn't have a real niche, songs you want to hear but can't find in South Florida. Well, that covers a lot of territory. Because if you can't find a song in South Florida, that means that something you, anybody would want to hear. So we're going to be having a lot of Molly Hatchet. And well, I'm going to gonna tell you right now. That's tracks from the likes of the Allman Brothers Band, Charlie Daniels Band, Leonard Skinner, Travis Tritt, Toby Keith, <laughs> and Hanks Williams Jr. Kiss plays more mainstream country t- uh, tunes, Sloan said. Whatever, I don't know what that means. Called Gretchen 99.9, the HD station is inspired by the self-titled redneck woman Gretchen Wilson, who's releasing her latest album, All Jacked Up, this week. Is that Gretchen Wilson? No, it's Leonard Skinner. Oh, Leonard Skinner. I can't hear it. No, I don't want to hear it. I like Leonard Skinner just fine. It's okay. Are they still dead, by the way, the uh, guys that died in the crash? Yes. The station, owned by Naples-based Beasley Broadcast Group, is one of some 200 HD outlets across the country, including Beasley's Power 96's Dances and Electronics Station and National Public Radio affiliate WLRN-FM's 91.3 Classical Music Station, HD. HD is cutting it. Cutting edge technology that offers crystal clear CD quality sound, but the signal can only be captured if you have a special HD receiver. Anybody out there got one? No. HD receivers costing some 250 to 600 bucks are slated to be widely available for this holiday season. Gretchen 99.9 will be streamed live, streamed live on Kiss.com as well as over uh, the air on HD2 99.9. Well, what, is it, what does that mean, HD2? I don't know. I guess that's some fangled HD talk we don't know about because we don't got no HD radio. And, of course, we're like uh, digital stereo uh, something here on AM, but nobody, there is nobody alive who's got one of those receivers, so we still sound like <laughs> like that, like old-time AM radio. We're kicking it old style. We're middle di- digital. Is that it, middle digit? Yeah. So what, what's the story on that uh, tombstone you got? We want to inquire uh, more uh, about the return that. address. I think it's a death threat. <laughs> but I'm going to use it. I'm going to take it home and use it for Halloween. It's one of those. Uh, but I mean, what is it? It's a tombstone. It's a, it's a motion-activated tombstone, and when you move in front of it, it makes sound. Yeah. I think if you move just in the right spot, it goes do, 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 do. like that. WQAM, hello. Hey, you pal. Now we can get her done high definition. Yeah, there you go. Hey, and since you're a brain surgeon, why don't you go ahead and put Richard Petty on that pole? All right. We'll do All it. right. See ya. Richard Petty. Yeah, no, golfers are athletes, then so are the, uh, the what? race car drivers. If golf, golfers are athletes, then so are race car drivers. I got news for you, man. Race car drivers are a hell of a lot more athletic than golfers. Even guys that play badminton are more athletic than golfers. Soccer players. Well, we got Paley on there. Yeah, they were, they but just about any any uh, sporting type activity or game that you can think of, even guys that play Monopoly, I think, are more yeah. athletic than golf. Poker. If they have it on ESPN, it must be a sport. There you go. If you like her, poker. poker. WQAM, hello. How you doing? Pretty good, Pally. I, I got one for your poll. This is from an yeah. era, era where you could beat up a white person, but you couldn't date one. Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. All right, Bill, thanks. Thanks a lot, Pally. We'll oh, see you the uh, good old around. Or just hanging. <laughs> wow. Five six seven oh five six. We get a lot of, uh, we get 50,000 names on here. Let's put every athlete. How about Joe Pepitone, huh? What about, uh, I was trying to think of that obscure name that I hit. Uh, how about Jerry Lumpy and Norm Seaburn? Who? Huh? How about Gus Zerniel? Who? How about, uh, there was a baseball player named Zeke, and I can't think of what his last name was. He played either for the Washington Center, I think for the Washington Center, Zeke. Although that was Gus Zerniel's nickname, Zeke, but there was actually a guy named Zeke. Somebody will know, and Josh will say, oh, yeah, I remember that. Five, six, seven, you better bone up on this stuff, man, because someday you might get, uh, like, on one of those shows, although I doubt it, like on Jeopardy. And you can pick ancient uh, jocks from the uh, Dark Ages. And you'll know every, so Bob Musil from the 1927 Yankees, speaking of 27, the world champion 27 Yankees. That's the year that uh, Baby Ruth hit 60 home runs, by the way, 1927. Did you know that? Uh, I didn't. Now you know it. See? Not even 1 o'clock yet, and you're learning phantasmagorical stuff here that someday might make you a lot of money, but I really doubt it. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you doing? I'm torn between Ed Cranepool and Gump Worsley. <laughs> oh, that's a tough spot to be in. You don't have to choose. We'll put them both on there. We'll put them both on there. All right. Have a good one. 
Marv Crane pulled those of the horrible Mets back in the days when the Mets were really a joke, although, quite frankly, nowadays, again. Gump Worsley. And uh, Gump Worsley, W-O-R-S-L-E-Y. In fact, he had a radio station's call letters with the first three letters of the Gumper's name, Gump Worsley. And Ed Cranepool? Ed Cranepool. How about Eddie Jackman? Those are the kind of hockey players that Mifo talks about, like in the distant past. That's Mifo's hockey knowledge. Ed Crane, Ed uh, Jackman, and uh, Gump Worsley. That's it. How about Eddie Shack? What do you say? What do you think? How about Gore? Here's one for serious. Gordy Howe. H O W E. How now, Brown Sow? That's what they say to Oprah. What do you think, Gordy Howe? Okay. Now, please don't tell me you never heard of Gordy Howe, Josh. I have. Jesus. Okay. I'm well, typing. Here. What? Yeah, he's heard about Jesus. I was typing. He was over there typing. You know, the mic's nowhere near. Yeah, he would know Gordy Howe from Howie and Morenz, from uh, Johnny Dolan's. Anyway, let me say it again as a warning. As a public service to the audience, if the movie The Anniversary Party comes uh, to a cable network near you, or if anybody offers to sell you or loan you or just give you the uh, DVD, just say, fat, and throw it back at him. Do not watch it. it. Highly touted, again, a piece of garbage. That, that's not an opinion. That's a fact. It is morbid. It's depressing. It doesn't go anywhere. It just goes on much, much too long, nearly two hours of crap. And guess what? The dog comes back home in the end. Oh, boy. Well, at least Somebody it had a happy ending. Yeah. No, it did not. That, that's why all this other tourist was going on inside, and the dog comes back, and he's sniffing around like, uh, you know, and that's it. And, and then the credits come on, and you say, that's it? That's what I wasted almost two hours of my, well, actually, two and a half hours of the commercials uh, of my life on this? On this piece of garbage? Yeah, it was on some, uh, one of those where they have commercials, you know. Like, IFC's got commercials. Although it wasn't on IFC, they would never show anything that bad. Anyway, here's a future poll suggestion, but I know we've done this many times. If I could get the hell out of South Florida, I would live in then Scott, New York, Kelly. We, we've done that, right? Yes, we have. I appreciate all the poll suggestions that that one uh, we've done before. And, we, and the one we're doing today, we've never done before. Believe me. We've done your favorite South Florida athlete, but never done just like generic, just in general. Anybody in the world, like, uh, like maybe uh, Harold Parker or Howard Parker, junior and senior, right? Oh. And what about Brian Sears, for Christ's sake? This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. No, this is Arnold. This is not a tumor. It's the one to two hour. Coming up tonight on Inside the Behind the True Hollywood Celebrity Music Biography Profile Story. If you look up hairband in the dictionary, you'll see these bushy little mothers. They were poisoned. We've had that loser, I mean, the guy from Poison, in here many times. Jason Turtleneck hosts the open mic poetry night at the Grounds for Divorce Coffee House. It gives him something to do, you know, since the record stopped selling and the groupie stopped polishing his knob. <laughs> every rose has its thorn, and in much the same way, every night has its dawn. Let us not forget that it is also analogous to the notion that every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. Thank you. Spurred on by the guy from Poison, other hard rock acts have hit the coffee house circuit, like the guy from Quiet Riot. Come on and feel the noise. And once you have felt the noise, now would be the time, if you're a girl, to proceed with rocking your boys. What we do in this instance is get wild, wild. Wild. But some metalists have found the transition difficult. They just rock too hard for the coffeehouse circuit, as evidenced by the guy from Iron Maiden. Oh, God. Poison. Their transition into spoken word poetry readings is inspiring. If by inspiring, you mean pathetic. It's a big, juicy, sopping wet look at show business tonight. On inside the behind. 101 at 560 WQAM. Uh, this is in interesting. Hundreds of thousands of Georgia children got a break from classes yesterday after Governor Sonny Perdue asked schools to close for two days as a hedge against possible fuel shortages, leaving many parents struggling to arrange child care. Isn't that what Willie Joe said? Joe Willie, we're struggling. We're struggling. The shortages that Purdue feared never materialized, largely because Rita proved less damaging to Gulf Coast refineries than initially expectorated. Parents learned of the governor's decision late Friday afternoon. Many families had to scramble over the weekend to make alternate arrangements for the chillins. Two mothers brought their grade schoolers to the Capitol on Monday for a teach-in on the steps just yards from Purdue's office. 
It certainly caused a lot of problems for working parents today. It causes problems for these kids who need to be learning and not just hanging it out watching the Cartoon Network at home, said Mother Randy David of suburban Atlanta. Randy David, no kin to Mo Howard David. Meanwhile, gas supplies are moving freely through uh, pipelines that serve Georgia. The governor's staff said yesterday that shortages were still possible later in the week because production was shut down for days because of the storm. Democrats, including state party chairman Bobby Kahn, criticized the move. The first thing he decided to do was close the schools, Kahn said. That shows something about his views on education and his priorities. Yeah. Can't complain about education in Georgia because, generally speaking, there ain't much. There ain't none. And if there is any, it's always segregated anyway. Well, there's a school of hard knockers. Although they do have a lot of big trees there, and, uh, you know, they Ain't. do the old rope it up there. Five six seven oh five sixty. It's uh, The trees are good for, like, crawling up into and playing the banjo in, and also just hanging out with your friends and hanging some of your enemies. WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil? Yes, sir. Yeah, Dale Murphy and Theo Fleury. Put them on there, baby. Okay, Dale Murphy and Theo Fleury. Hey, Theo. You fairy. Dale Murphy. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. He was one hell of a player, and man. Did he look good or what? Dale Murphy. Oh, he drank too much milk to satisfy me. You know, he was married, he had a wife, all the other stuff, but I can't imagine he ever said the F word. F. Aren't, aren't you disturbed a little? Well, I'm sure he did, but aren't you a little bit disturbed by people who tend to come off as being like, like Pat Boone, you know? Too goody two shoes. And then yeah. when the chips were down and Pat Boone was doing like heavy metal music to try to pedal an album because he was so desperate for cash, eh, that's the kind of hypocrite you're dealing with there. Hey, Pat, you idiot, you, uh. You fairy! Now, how's that old Boone in the box coming, Pat? Looks like an acorn to me. Five six seven. Oh, there's line line nine again. This might be from Georgia. WQAM. Hello. Yeah. Hey, Neil. I've got one uh, for your poll. And where are you calling from today, sir? Dubuque, Iowa. Dubuque, Iowa. Oh, oh my God. Where the real uh, guys are. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Hey, Bob Feller. Bob Feller, a great uh, Cleveland Indians right-hander. You got it. Thanks a lot, Pally. Thank you. Bob Feller, you got, you got it? it? Was he a nice feller? He was a good feller. 1948, I think the Indians won a pennant thanks to Bob Feller. And then he was part of that great Indians pitching staff in 54 when he won a pennant. Early win in Bob Le- Lemon and Mike Garcia and Bob Feller. How do you like that? All right. I got, I got, that's part, again, of my knowledge of useless crap that I wish I could get rid of. Just clutters up my brain, you know? Like uh, a day of rain in Johnny Sane and Eddie Lopat and Whitey Ford. And Allie Reynolds, the chief. I bet you Josh knows all about those 54 Yankees and engines, don't you? Bobby Ovila, Irv yeah. Norin. Oh, yeah. WQAM, hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, did, uh, you mentioned any swimmers like uh, Mark Spitz. He's on there. Is he on there? He's on there. He's swimming. Okay. He's, uh, right. he's drilling for dollars now, Mark Spitz. That was a pretty good-looking guy, Mark Spitz. He's got a wife and a family, and he's a dentist now. He's drilling it in the teeth, too. No, oh, that means he tells our, everyone to... Spit. Mark Spitz. Probably a good idea. Rinse and then. He uh, has a mustache. That's one other little piece of trivia for you there. Everybody knows about Mark Spitz. He was a great swimmer, and he's also a good Jewish boy there, too. How do you like that? As opposed to bad Jewish boy like Meyer Lansky. Meyer Lanscape. Hey. He was Don't be knocking Meyer Lansky, man. Country. Don't be knocking Hyman Roth. The old, uh, the old uh, Yiddelach there on the beach, they used to like uh, Hyman Roth. I mean, Meyer Lansky. He used to walk his dog on Collins Avenue, and he was a very nice man. And then, of course, remember that thing that happened at the Forge that time? Right? Just an isolated incident. WQAM, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Let me say it again. Yes, sir. He's gone. He's history. Hello. I think he just expired. Wow. That was probably the, probably the funeral home calling on the other end to make arrangements. QAM, hello. Hello. I got something for the poll. Okay. Sandy Koufax. Sandy Koufax. Now we're talking about a good Boy. Jewish picture. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I'm on, right? Thank you. All right, man. Sandy Koufax wouldn't pitch on Yom Kippur. Now, what did Hank say that next uh, Tuesday is uh, Rosh Hashanah? It's, Jew, it's the Jew year, New Year. Okay. Uh, the CENTCOM and the... Speaking of Nazis, man, I bet, you, I bet you Rumsfeld's got his plans there. He's got some devious plans. He has days. Yeah, he's going to call his friend the Exterminator. He knows the Terminator, but he'd rather call him the Exterminator. Man, oh, man. In fact, they just had that thing about was Hitler gay. I told you about that movie two nights ago that mm-hmm. I watched. And they showed some of the footage of the Nuremberg, uh, well, no, it wasn't Nuremberg trials. It was uh, footage of Hitler making one of his speeches. And there was Hermann Goering in the back. Boy, I'll tell you, a little, if, if Rumsfeld put on about 10 pounds and put on his SS boots that I'm sure he marches around with in private, uh, there, there's a clone. You might Just, mention my name to Rice Marshal Goering. Take the glasses off, put on about 10 pounds, and put on that uh, outfit, you know, all the stripes in the start. And there's Hermann Goering. Goose stepping around into your life. Murderer! Rumsfeld, you murderer, you butcher! Security forces. You nincompoop, you idiot, you neocon lunatic! 
Why don't you elope with uh, Bill, what's his name? Tell us his name from the National Review, that lunatic. Oh, um... Crystal. Okay. Is that what you're thinking of? That's not his name? I know, Billy oh, that's, Crystal. that's one of them. That's the one I'm talking about, Bill Crystal, whose daddy was the head of the neocon movement, one of the founders, one of the movers and shakers. He's shaking it, and I shake him. And they put him on there. Chris Matthews puts him on the other day. He's got that half-hour show on a weekend on either CNBC or one of those. Chris Matthews. Who's he got on the pool? Bill Crystal. Neocon lunatic telling us about how everything's going so great in Iraq. I'm dying out of here. Maniac, you butcher, you... Oh, brother. They ought to take Richard Pearl, Bill Crystal, uh, this one here, Rumsfeld, and Dick Cheney. All of those people ought to be in federal prison right now. Talk about the Nuremberg trials. I, I say let's bring it back again, okay? Are you talking about one of those faith-based prisons? Let's right? do it again. Geneva, New York, the Geneva trials. Forget about Nuremberg. Bunch of crouch there anyway. WQAM, hello. Yeah, one for the poll. Yes, sir. Uh, Peter North. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was pretty athletic. WQAM, hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm calling from the Metro Dade Jail, and we all choose Jose Canseco <laughs> as our favorite. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. It, right. it, it's, uh, it, it's true that Roxy and Goldie are going to be calling the Panthers game? That's yeah. Uh, okay, quit wide your head. Quit wide your head. Jose Canseco, put him on and he'll get votes. I bet you Eliana will vote for him now that she's off of uh, she's off of Raffi's uh, bandwagon. Oh, Raffi, you're so wonderful. We're so all so proud of you. Yeah, right. Let's do the hearings over again, sweetheart. And let's put Mark McGuire on her to say. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk about the past. That that would be like that would be like uh, the, the, the Nuremberg trials. So uh, we aren't going to talk about the past. The past is the past. You know. Well, yeah, what well, kind of crap is that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother. Look at this. The new Iraq is on the path toward freedom and democracy, says Hermann Gary Rumsfeld. Oh, brother, you idiot. You fairy. <clears throat> Who the hell do you think you're talking to? And I'll say it again. The media, the war, there's no war going on. There's nobody dying. All these stories that I find on these various websites, uh, there's nothing on CNN, MSNBC, nothing. Absolutely nothing. All we see is water in the streets in Louisiana and in Texas and Alabama and Mississippi and places like that. that that's all we see. Hurricanes. Nothing at all going on having to do with people dying and bloodshed. And, and I'll say it again. We had, I, I just read an article. I think I just uh, emailed it for tomorrow to uh, Josh about the fact that Baghdad is uh, without power most of the day now. And all these poor bastards are over there in the dark. There's no power. <coughs> yeah. But everything, and, and, and of course, maybe the, the media would say, oh, we don't have any power either. Right, your mama, who are you kidding? They could be showing us live pictures right now of the bloodshed and the grotesque stuff going on over there, but they don't want to because it's bad for business, just like we can't show those flag-draped caskets coming back from Germany. Right. Twelve minutes after one at 560 WQM. Hey, Chuck Alfieri says, hey, better talk about it this hour than last. In fact, since I started doing this spot last hour, probably a few more follicles fell out, wouldn't you think? I'm sure they did. Chuck Alfieri has been helping the famous and not-so-famous guys look their best for over 30 years now. About 30, man. Because Charlie's got the best-looking hair going anywhere in the world. There are a lot of hair pieces that are wigs. They're a piece. And you can tell by looking at them, man, they're ridiculous. Anybody can tell. It's a muskrat on the head. It looks like a dead barnyard animal. It looks like a bunch of straw got stuck in the uh, holes in your head. But Charlie's created the best, the most natural system in the world. His new skin-like hair system, the natural hairline system, is 100% detectable. Looks like real hair growing out of your scalp. And that's the difference. It'll make you look years younger and better than you ever dreamed you could again, whether you're like 25 or 105. And Charlie's work is guaranteed. You have nothing to lose but that shiny, reflective bald spot. You try Charlie's system for a month, for 30 days. Not 30, man. And after a month, if you don't love the way it looks and feels, and if you're not getting laid like 40, 50, 60 times a day, or at least not 30, 30 man. times a day, return it for a full refund. Make the call today. Tell Charlie you heard about it here on the Neil Rogers Show. And get your special QAM $200 discount off the regular $800 price of the best in the world natural hairline system. Call toll-free 1-800-321-2413. Be sure and tell them that Troy Stratford told you to call. They will just pee in their pants laughing. 1-800-321-2413. Or on the Wicked Web, it's charlesalfieri.com. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. 
Goldberg. Weekday morning, 7 to 10. Butch Davis, former Browns coach, former University of Miami coach. Coach Davis, what do you think the biggest problem was that you had up in Cleveland? I don't think we have uh, the show's not long. <laughs> you know, I made some mistakes. There's some things that I wish that I would have done differently. You know, the old story about the cover being bare from the standpoint, you were basically kind of somewhat starting from scratch. And then two years after we get into the playoffs, then we've got to have a $25 million salary cap purge. And I can tell you that that probably one single thing destroyed all the credibility that you have as a coach in the locker room. Wake up with a hammer. Weekdays from 7 to 10. Only on Sports Radio 560 QAM. All the crap you can unwrap. All the slime all the time. Oh, honey. I was so worried. Yeah, I know. It's okay. The boat's a little beat up, but we're okay. Oh. Thanks to the Coast Guard. I am the port in the storm. The slick is contained. Ooh, that KY is so slippery. Roger that. I am the line in the sand. And I have sand stuck in every nook and cranny of my body. Oh, I got you. Hang on. Okay, take us up. I am the rescuer in the dark. I am the enforcer of the seas. I am naked. And I like it. I'm in container 38. Everything is secure. Good work, Garcia. Now. What do you wear? To become one of us, call toll free one eight seven seven. Don't ask, don't tell. Or visit gocoastguard.com. We are the United States Coast Guard. The United States Coast Guard and Coast Guard Reserve. The shield of freedom. We're kind of like the Navy, except we like to dance backwards. Sponsored by the U.S. Coast Guard in cooperation with this station. Hey, sailor. 117 at 560 WQM. Now, some people would say, well, I got that thing on there now with uh, uh, the general and with Rumsfeld on it. That, that's that's uh, propaganda. That's not that's not news about Iraq. That thing. It's just uh, prop- propaganda. Anyway, wait till you hear this. Bad news again for Florida. Boy, there's some bad stuff going on there. Not bad enough that Keese, Keese is going HD. And let me just say these about Keese, okay? Keese. We don't care about Kiss or about power. We no. want you to listen to QAM. All, everybody on QAM, we want you to keep it on 25 hours a day, eight days a week, because it means money to us, okay? If you like us, you'll keep it on, even during shows do, 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 that do, do, you do, do, hate. Yeah. Keep it on. Mark yeah. it down. And we definitely don't want to, li- we, we sure don't want you to listen to that 790 crap because we'll do anything to hurt them. Right, Joel? Am I right? Absolutely. Well, you idiot. You quizzling. You weakling, you simpering... Uh, you fairy! Bradenton Beach, the red tide bloom that has plagued the southwest Florida coast for most of the year, is chasing away tourists this fall, business owners and tourism officials said. Bradenton Beach, well, you know what? Hubman and dreared. The toxic algae has left loads of stinky dead fishes on beaches and makes it hard for people to breathe. It's prompted early checkouts and cancellations at hotels and tourist hotspots such as Anna Maria Island near Bradenton and Sanibel and Captiva Islands off Fort Myers. Well, like I said, Hubman and dreared. That will teach all those going to go over there to those stupid islands, right? Right. Beach businesses, business owners are concerned that it could reduce their tourist traffic as they gear up for the busy winter season. This is definitely a bad thing, said Steve Greenstein. Aha! Executive Director of the Santa Bella and Captiva Islands Chamber of Commerce. Like I said, but September is traditionally a light month for occupancy. If the red tide continues through the season, though, it could mean economic ruin. Ruin! How do you like that? At Bradenton Beach on Anna Maria Island, Lynn jo- J- Johnson, who owns Fun and Son uh, Parasail, said the stench has been almost unbearable, just like the QM Studios there. Saturday we came to work, and the beach and the bay were just filled with dead fish, he said. Every kind of fish, eels, blowfish, grouper, they've laid there dead for three days. You could walk on it. You wouldn't believe the stench. Mary Ann Brockman, executive director of Anna Maria Island Chamber of Commerce, said she's received complaints from tourists. We hear visitors saying, what is that? Why can't I breathe? So it's causing. A, so in other words, the West Coast of Florida, which we've put here for a long time, stinks. Okay, it stinks over there. Am I right? I haven't been there in a long time. We're, I'm, I'm saying with or without the fish. I'm not talking about oh, that. Oh, I see. Forget about this. I'm not talking about aroma. I'm talking about ambiance. It stinks. And of course, the Beasley's being over there. I think. Oh, there's General Myers. Okay, bada beep, bada boop, bada bop. Yeah, right. Keep lying, baby. Keep lying. You decide you want to give uh, active duty forces. Uh, law enforcement authority. Yeah, there you go. Oh, he, see, they're not even talking about Iraq. They're talking about uh, putting uh, the military, which they should have done that in the first place, is bring the military in, the ten uh, members of the troops that aren't in Iraq. Am I right or what? Well, yeah. When you, got, when you have a major catastrophe happening, you call in the military. You call in every available body is what you do. And I still wonder how those, Cana- those Canuck guys on their, uh, those Royal Canadian Mounteds, how they got there first before the damn local authorities. They probably walked. God Almighty. WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. I have one for you both today. I'm sure you do. Go ahead. How about Hank Greenberg? Hank Greenberg, boy, that's uh, you must be an old-timer. I'm an old-timer. 
A real old timer. Okay, thanks a lot, Pally. Take care, buddy. He was no Hank Goldberg, by the way. Hank Greenberg. Hank Greenberg, great slugger. Detroit Tigers, I believe. Hank Greenberg, I don't even remember. Wasn't he, Josh? Yeah. Do a Google. Do a Google on Hank Greenberg. Yeah, he was. Detroit. Detroit. No. Oh, how do you know that? I've heard. <laughs> okay. Five, six, seven. What about uh, I, there's so many? You know, this poll is kind of ridiculous because there's so many. But it's and of course, Danny Boy beating all of these other great athletes. What does that tell you, huh? What does that tell you? I'm going to put on Joe Marsh Jr. Okay. Put him on what? The poll. Okay. Hey, he's 100 years old. He's still alive, by the way. The son, Ron. See, one thing about harness racing, it's a family business, and you go from one generation to another. There's Ronnie Marsh, and there's uh, all these others, sons and daughters. There's uh, was the great Gene Sears, for example, Hall of Fame, dead. Then there was his son, Jay Sears, my good friend Jay at Pompano Park, who couldn't drive his finger up your nose, but nevertheless taught his son well. Brian, best driver in the world. Put Brian Sears on there right now, okay? The best in the world. Nice going, Brian. See, you don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? You, you, you talking the people to me? in this no. audience, the people in this audience wouldn't know Brian Sears from Sears Roebuck, and I still want to put him on here because he's great, he's phenomenal, and we're proud of him. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, I think what he's talking about giving active duty uh, people uh, police powers. He's talking about the standing military, so they can go ahead and declare martial law anywhere for any reason at any right. time, and therefore be a complete police state. Gesta the word you're looking for is Gestapo. Yeah, Gestapo, so they can right. use them anywhere they want for any crisis and that declare, is correct. They, you know, throw anybody in jail, and you know. That's right. But that's it. They're not really when they when they anything. discover you got a hustler magazine that you just bought in a brown paper uh, wrapper at your local. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. They're gonna they're gonna send them into your house, man. Give you the old what for? They'll be marching down the road, say, uh, "Please uh, calm down. We're gonna help you." The Larry Flint police will be back. That's right. Oh, nice talking to you, Neil. See you, Pally. They'll give you a little bit of that Abu Ghraib treatment, especially with that Alberto Jose Jimenez Gonzalez now going to be the uh, the Fuhrer, the the, the right hand man of the Fuhrer. You understand the Gestapo keeps track of everyone. <laughs> yeah, five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. You cannot blame most of the American people, the ones who are intelligent enough to realize we don't want to give too many police powers, okay? Because once that Gestapo comes in there, we're all going to be uh, walking very, very strange, even stranger than some of us already do. You're going to be goose-stepping, like you're kind of like a corn cob in your... Rectum. WQAM, hello. Hey, how you doing today? Kind of that Sally Fitz march. Yes, sir. Let me get that radio turned down. Turn that radio got, down, please. I got a uh, I got a poll for you. I mean, a poll member for you. A poll member? Yeah. Is yeah, he's redundant? A, he's a, yeah, I guess so. He's a, so <laughs> he's a soccer player, George Best. George Best? George Best. Anybody who knows soccer knows George Best. Oh, now let me ask you this. Now, what's the guy's the uh, big shot David? Uh, what's his name in England? Uh, Beckham. Beckham. Uh, Beckham. David Beckham. We got to get him on there too, right? Oh, uh, you can put Beckham on, yeah. You well, obviously aren't a big fan of his. Well, what, what I was the? Uh, no, I haven't kept up with it. George Best used to play in Fort Lauderdale. And he's probably one of the finest that's ever played the game anywhere. Okay, thanks a lot, Tully. My friend Ray Hudson would be proud to hear that. In fact, that old toad, oh, I should have mentioned this to Hank this morning, that old toad, Sarney, he wrote a column yesterday about the greatest stuff he ever covered that was the Florida Strikers. The mm. Florida Strikers, okay? Mm. The Marlins have won two World Series. The Dolphins had back-to-back -back Super Bowl victories, including the undefeated season. And the most, the, the most scintillating, worthwhile thing he's covered was the freaking Florida Strikers, uh, Strikers, Psyker, uh, Socko crap. You ready for that? No. Nope. He is such a toad. Oh, here we go. Not one woman on the poll. Okay, Anna Kornikova. Let's get around there right away. And Chris Everett. Okay. okay. Don't be a sissy. Vote for Chrissy. You got those, Josh? Anna Kornohoya and Chris Everett. Yeah, there should be some women. Uh, well, there aren't really a lot of great women athletes. We could put, what's your name, Martina on there for the Dyke element. Couldn't we? And, well, okay. we already got uh, Anna Kornohoya. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon Singular wireless line. I wonder if Pavel Burry got a vote. Uh, I bet he doesn't have one. Does he? Did he get a vote? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. He's got a, a pair. Pavel Burry's got a pair. Can you believe that? And what's that under? And we got we got we got this one. Ray Whitney has a pair. Yeah, it's under Burry. It is. Trust me. Okay. Well, you sure know your. Uh... Pavel Burry's got a huge pair. <laughs> oh. And Randy Muller, if anybody knows that, hangs out in that locker room. Randy, old Red Deer Randy, he's the guy who knows. This is Neil Rogers. <laughs> this is 560 QAM. And Neil Rogers. Oh! Boy, come from car, protect us with a guitar on my knee. While they died in Louisiana, I raised cash for the GOP. 
Swing your partner round and round. Now do a little swimming through New Orleans town. Swim to the left, to the right. Here we go. Swing a little mud. Now do si do. Oh, Katrina, why didn't those people flee? Because it's worse in Louisiana than it is for near Iraqi. I tell you one thing, if you didn't do a bad number in your pants before, you will now. This is some of the most ridiculous news I have ever heard. The ultimate, the dumbing down of America, man. Right. If you like him as Benifer, you'll love him as Benador, it says huh. in the Washington Post. Yeah, guess who's being touted as the uh, next senator from Virginia? Let me give you one clue. You fairy. Okay. Does that narrow it down? Well, Ben Affleck. That's the hot new idea being tossed around by Virginia Democrats who are desperately searching for a big name to challenge the re-election bid of rising GOP star Senator George Allen next year, now that outgoing Governor Mark Warner is ducked out. Why? Who should it uh, happen to be pondering a move to Thomas Jefferson County but a certain square-jawed media maggot with a taste for liberal politics and millions to spend on it? Ben Affleck, the star of Geely and the J-Lo uh, romance and uh, all sorts of horrible movies, happily settled with alias star Jennifer Garner. Anybody buying that? No. No. I think maybe he was settled with Earl Stanley Garner. You, wow. The couple I'm expecting their stunned. first child. You see that? They're expecting their first child. Doesn't that prove it to you? Okay, whatever. Have been shopping for real estate around Charlottesville. British tabloids claim it's a done deal. And the, uh, let's see, the Washington uh, Post says will only go so far as to report that they checked out at least one country estate a few weeks ago. It was about that time that party officials started batting Affleck's name around. It spread pretty widely, at least in the political underground. University of Professor of Virginia Professor Larry Sabato, what kind of a name is that, Larry Saturday? Sure, why not? Virginia's premier pundit told uh, Michael Scheer, the post-Richmond correspondent. That would be like Dwight Lauderdale. Like Placido Domingo? Right. Another name on the wish list, blockbuster legal thriller writer John Grisham. But the central Virginia farmhouse owner who gave generously Democrats did a stint in the Mississippi legislature have, has brushed off past the overtures. In truth, the Democrats are less concerned with beating Allen than slowing him down. Both he and Warner are eyeing the 2008 presidential race. How do you like that? Benef Benedict. But he's married now and making babies, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, we believe that. Hey, Ben. You fairy. Maybe he's making babies with Tom Cruise. They're working on it anyway. A bigger issue besides his sexuality, whatever that might be. The fact that he has no talent? Yeah, and he's just a dullard. Yeah. I would suggest all of these things. We got, uh, how many votes have we got? 900 and something now? 885. Well, we're certainly going to go past 900 today, which is good, because, you know, a lot of people aren't going to vote because it's sports, and they're, not, they're just not going to say, well, we don't like sports. They won't even make the effort to do that. Or maybe their favorite athlete isn't on here because you, uh, you and I are talking too much. Well, let's stop that. Well, okay, well, let's take a whole bunch of calls between now and uh, 4 o'clock. WQAM, the famous Line 9. Hello. Yeah, I'm um, talk, uh, calling about uh see if Neil saw that uh, thing about Michael Brown with Congress. Did I see it? I've seen it. Yeah, man. See him running away from all those yeah, questions. Yeah, he's in It's, it's everybody road. else's fault, right. It's all the local politicians. He didn't have nothing to do with that. Uh, he's they ought to string his ass up is what they ought to do. He's scum. Amen. Nice call, Pally. In fact, I, we want to apologize to all the real scum of the world because he's lower than that on the human food chain, on the subhuman food chain, old uh, brownie. See, this guy's down there making $32 an hour. Now, New Orleans ain't never paid $32 an hour before the storm. So now is the time for the people to go back and make some of that money so they can build their own houses back together so they can be part of that rebuilding crew. Yeah. And what, what do you say to that? Amen, brother. Go okay, well, house. you tell me what he said, and then I'll let you know what I think. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, you forgot one for the poll. Well, we probably forgot about 500. What do you got? <laughs> Bruce Lee, man. <laughs> Bruce Lee, right. Oh, Bruce Lehman. Uh, well, look at that. There, this guy's name is Mark Dvorak. I wonder if he's kin to uh, Radak Dvorak. Rat attack. Rat attack. You know, Chris Moore, I hate to break the news to you, Chris, but this is the guy that went on the air and said, I don't think Neil Rogers will ever be on QAM. Almost eight years now, sweetheart. Kicking ass. How are you doing, Chris? You imbecile. You silly person. See, I should know right off the bat when the booster came to me one time at a game and says to me, uh, oh, well, Chris Moore, uh, I told him what a piece of crap he was. Uh, oh, he, uh, you know, he's doing NHL hockey. He do, used to do the New Jersey Devils. I said, so what does that prove? I said, there are a lot of horrible people doing play-by-play. -play. What does that prove? Uh, I don't know. That's the booster, your close personal friend, Josh. I understand the two of you are like, uh, kind of like uh, falling in different directions. What does that mean? I don't know. You're having a falling out. Or is that you and Roxy? 
Or you and uh, Rich. Now, let me ask you this. Since this is the last week of the Marlins season, obviously, these are the last few games, then you have a little hiatus for several months. Uh, is Rich Waltz going to be coming back and doing the games on TV again next year? We can only pray the answer is no. We pray, please, please come to your senses. No, he, fact, should, how, he should be coming back. Why? I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't heard any other. What do you mean he should be coming back? Well, I haven't heard talent, otherwise. Based on talent, based on the fact that Jim Sarney's got his head up his ass, based I, on the fact that very jackass is afraid to really rip him the ass he deserves, he is unqualified. You know that. He's pathetic. He is pathetic. He makes Dave Van Boring sound like Mel Allen. Like like a combination of Bob Prince, Mal Allen, and Harry Carey all rolled into one, Rich Waltz. He sounds like a little, like a, about a 12-year-old kid with a microphone sitting in a basement somewhere with an old webcore tape recorder pretending to be a, ba- a baseball broadcaster. He's awful. He is totally, in fact, he's like the brownie of uh, South Florida. He's like uh, Michael Brown. He is unqualified. Un- qualified. <laughs> or something. I know you got another week of hanging around with those guys. You just have to continue uh, keeping mum. Once the season's over, though, you can rip him in the ass. Five six seven oh five six. Unless you really think he's doing a hell of a good job, I, I really don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth because I know you ripped Jimmy Syphilis real bad. Well, deservingly so. Uh, exactly. Just like Rich Waltz. WQAM. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, one for the poll. Okay. What is Let it? Let me say it. Go ahead, say it. Just Muhammad Ali. No, nope. Muhammad Ali's got fifty-three votes. But don't say it. WQAM. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Do you know that uh, Joe Zakaki goes into phone booths and comes out as brother Mike Lance? <laughs> wow. Yeah. My, my, my. I should kick that was the, quite a revelation, uh, okay? Superman theme for that one. Yeah. WQAM. I guess he doesn't need the glasses, though. QAM, hello. Neil, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, listen, I know it's a little late in the show, but I was wondering if I could make a request. Yeah. Can you play that bit with uh, Paul Harvey where he's telling the joke about the two guys on the farm? No problem. The widow. Thank you. All you right. got it. The two guys on the farm with a widow. You know the one he's talking about? Yeah, it's the, the widow joke. Oh. Good morning, Americans. It's Paul Harvey. Stand by for news. Jack decides to go skiing with his buddy Bob. They load up Jack's station wagon and head north. After driving a few hours, they get caught in a terrible blizzard. They pull into a nearby farmhouse and ask the attractive lady of the house if they can spend the night. Well, I'm recently widowed, she explains, and I'm afraid the neighbors would talk if I let you stay in the house. Not to worry, Jack says, we'll be happy to sleep in the barn. Well, nine months later, Jack gets a letter from the widow's attorney. He calls his friend Bob and says, do you remember that good-looking widow at the farm we stayed at? Well, yes, I do. Well, did you happen to get up in the middle of the night, go into the house, and make love to her? Yes, I have to admit I did. Well, did you happen to use my name instead of telling her your name? Bob's face turns red and he says, yes, I'm afraid I did. To which Jack says, well, thanks a lot, pal. Jack says, she just died and left me her farm. Paul Harvey. Good day. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Good. Payment. Uh, it's out. No, it's not out. Smack it. Oh, yeah. There's this thing on it. Smack it. It's definitely done. Tweak it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. See? Butts and boinking. Absolutely. Abu Ghraib. Bush ignored the city of New Orleans. Yes, some of the people down there say he failed. Stuffs the people in the Astrodome like cattle. While half the National Guard was in Iraq He cut funding for their levies Looters causing anarchy In Aruba we made a bigger deal In search for Natalie Holloway For one white girl we drained a lake And even asked for help from the Navy I'm dying out of here. George Bush was vacationing in Crawford. (laughs) I guess next year there'll be no Mardi Gras. Girls gone wild needs the city of New Orleans. Or they'll have to send their film crew to Florida. 
919 votes in that poll. And our buddy Wayne, remember Wayne from the uh, Paxson days at WIOD, of, of course. course. Wayne wants to move in with uh, George or Josh is what he's saying. He can't move in with me because he can't afford to get up here. Plus, I don't want him. But he says, what about Barry Sanders for the poll, for Christ's sakes? And he's still looking for a place to hang out. Remember, okay. he wanted to move in with me and hang out for a while. And here it is. How many years later now? <laughs> oh, I might still have a border all these years later. <laughs> I don't want you to take it personally, Wayne, because, uh, you know, the answer was no then. It would still be no now. If J.C., who was at IOD in those same days, said he wanted to move in with me. I wanted it. Uh, the answer would have been yes. But that's another story. Remember J.C.? I yeah, wanted I it. And what about uh, J.P.? What about him with the uh, hair? The, with the hairy one. Oh, that's okay. I'd overlook it. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Papa Juan Pablo. He's gone. Actually, he called me and left a message one time. He was sucking around. I forget, and I didn't return the call. He was uh, off in school somewhere in Gatorland or someplace like that. Yeah, but old Wayne is still around. That's interesting. Let's get Barry Sanders on there right away for Wayne. And uh, Josh says, no problem. You can move with, in with him in his new place. No, I'm good. Oh. What about George? I beg your pardon? Wayne ha needs a place to stay for Wayne. I have a special place for him. <laughs> right, right, right really? Yeah, oh! It's right here. Oh. Rectum. Here's line nine again. QAM. Hey, Neil, I got a good song about uh, weed, man. How do I send it into you? Okay. Okay, send it into us. WQAM, hello. Put it in the uh, container and put it in the, uh, put it in the uh, intercoastal and float it down to us. QAM, hello. Yeah, Neil, please. Yes, sir, speaking. Neil, I have one for your phone today. Okay. Let's go back to George Mikan. George How's Mikan? That? He just George died Mikan. not too put long ago, didn't he? Excuse me? He just died not that long ago. Oh, uh, not too long ago. Yeah. All right, man. Love your show, buddy. Thanks a lot, Pally. George Mike with the uh, Minnesota. What the hell was the name of that team? I should ask him. The old Minnesota. Um, oh, geez, the basketball player. Huh? He was a great basketball. George Mike he was uh, great. And we could probably also put Cliff Hagen and Bob Pettit on there and people like that. And mm -hmm. then for people from Rochester, we could put Arnie Risen and Bobby Wanzer. I'm just kidding about those, by the way. But George Mike belongs on there. Not the Minnesota Timberwolves, but way, way, way back then when they originally had their first team. What was the name of that? In fact, Google uh, George Mikan, M-I-K-A-N, please, Josh. He's Googling it. And see what it says, what the name of that team was. I can't believe it. I can't remember that. I'm sure that's uh, who it was. WQAM, hello. Hey, can I speak to Neil? Speaking. Neil, what's up, pal? How you doing, Pally? Good, good. I got two requests. Uh-huh. Can you play that one bit where the guy calls in about Moe's hairpiece? Okay. And can I call somebody a douchebag? Ah! I hit it four times there. Well, you can't say D-bag anymore, sir. We just had a Joyce here. Right. We can't say D-bag. It's, it's in D we can say it's in D-bag. Right. Can we say that? And we can also say... The uh, doctor that performed the surgery on uh, Jay Fiedler's thumb, mm -hmm. isn't he the same doctor that performed the uh, procedure on your toupee? Um, it's the doctor who performed the surgery. Let's think about that. What's his name? Why? <laughs> Neither doctor? Yeah. I don't know where he, who, who, I don't know who he used. Did he use George Caldwell? I'm not sure. I think I'm not sure where he went. doctor, isn't he? I'm not sure where he went. Did he go to Holy Cross? I, I didn't read it. Not sure. Well, bottom line is that I don't, the doctors can't tell how long Jay's going to be out. No, you're not, you're not sure. Somewhere in at least a month, could be up to eight weeks, somewhere in there. Wally on the wall with your NQM. Yeah, when uh, Geldy lets that little smirkle go in there, it's like... I think that was the beginning of the end for those two. That was uh, when he started being on the outside of uh, the whole deal. At any rate, five, six, seven. We'll get a few more names on here. It's sad that we don't have, we should have every athlete who ever played on here. There's so many great ones, you know, that we left off. But, again, it's your favorite. How about Bob Cousy? C-O-U-S-Y. Bob Cousy. All those uh, Celtic fans, huh? I mean, if we got, uh, what's his name on here? Who else do we have? What other basketball besides uh uh, Michael, you got Larry Bird on there. Larry, that's that's what I meant. If we got if we got the obnoxious Larry Bird on there, and certainly Bob Cousy, who by the way cannot speak. Have you ever heard Bob Cousy talk? Yeah, it's not good. He does the collar on the cello. I mean, how how speak? Uh, there, there's I, I don't know. I mean, some people would call it an accent or an affectation. I just say he cannot speak. Bob Cousy, which makes him perfect, just like Lenny Martez, to be on the radio. This is Neil Rogers. This is five sixty Q A M. They play like men, and they look like women.
Yay. Okay, so I want to say Minneapolis Lakers. Am I right? I didn't look it up. Yes. Yeah, the Lakers. That's where the Lakers were before the. I mean, I knew he played for the Lakers. I didn't know, you know, where Minneapolis was. Lakers. Right. Uh, before we were, before anybody was born, except me, I was born. But anyway, that's the deal with George Mike. And anyway, we asked today who is your all-time favorite athlete, and I'm sure we could add like thousands more on here. Like, uh, oh, for crying out loud, Bobby Richardson and Gil McDougald and Tony Kubek and uh, Joe Pepitone and Joe Collins and Eddie Robinson and all the other Yankees, right? So that's just one team. And Daryl Sittler and Frank Mahovlich and Davey Keon and George Armstrong. That's just one the hockey team, right? Okay. Right. But at any rate, the fact, what has Pavel Bury got here? This is just, has he still he's got, got a, a small he's got pair? He's got a pair is what I heard. He has, yeah, he's still got that same huge, huge pair. pair. Now that, this, that, that goes to, I don't care about all these other votes on there, but that has to tell you right there about South Florida. It's, it's just, it's so depressing. It, it just makes you weak. Another reason I'm just... Um, Kissing, I'm kissing the table here. I'm kissing the oh, ground. I'm kissing the ground. Kissing. All right. I'm kissing now. And the table, too. Just the fact that I'm not there. Well, that's too bad. You made a lot of money. You know something? That's great. That's all well and good. And people supported the show over the years. And thank you so much. And we hope you continue doing it. But I, I'm telling you right now, when in doubt, get the hell out. If you okay. value your sanity in your life. Right on. Get out. In fact, George is just counting the, ah. the days until he wins the lotto or something. Something. Anything. Or until Boca Brian loans him about $5 million so we can get the hell out of there. And, of course, Josh, I mean, you know, he'll go wherever the Marlins take him. Who is your all-time favorite athlete? Dan Marino, 197. Nobody even close. In a league of his own. Danny boy. I hate sports, 139. Almost 15% of this audience to just... They, see, even if I hated sports, which I don't, but if I did, I, you know, there would have to be somebody that I would like or admire. You know, things like, right? Okay. No? Michael Jordan, 58. Mickey Mantle, 57. Muhammad Ali, 56. You see how close those three are? They're side by each. They're nose to nose. Mickey is falling a little behind, though. Babe Ruth, 33. Journey, 25. All right. I think we ought to get Journey on every pool now. Willie Mays, 25. Bobby Orr, 23. Best hockey player who ever lived. Shaq, 20. Shaq! Wayne Gretzky, 19. Larry Bird, 18. Lance Armstrong, 16. Pele, 13. Mad Dog, 13. All right. Roberto Clemente, 13. Magic Johnson, 13. Tom Brady just moved into Danny's uh, uniform number, 13. O.J.'s got 12. How sad. Bob Greasy, 11. Tiger Woods, 11. Mario Lemieux, 10. Jimmy Brown, 8. Yogi Berra, 8. Larry Zonka, 7. He's still alive. He's hanging on. Jack Nicholas and Lou Gehrig and Walter Payton and Dick Butkus, 6 apiece. Dick Butkus. Al Kaline, Greg Lucenis, Joe Namath, Jeff Gordon, 5 apiece. Hulk Hogan, 4. Jo uh, John Hogan don't have any. Johnny and I, this Cal, Cal Ripken, John Elway, Mark Spitz, Ted Williams, Jackie Robinson, Johnny Bauer, four apiece. Three apiece for Laura L.T., Thurman Munson, Joe DiMaggio, Ernie Banks, Boog Powell, Jim Thorpe, Lyle Alzado, Billy Smith, two apiece for Anna Cornahoya, Gordy Howe, Gump Worsley, <coughs> Pop Albury, two. What a joke. Jesse Owens, Sugar Ray Leonard, Mike Tyson, and Barry Bonds, two apiece. And the rest of the story, Solamente Uno or Cero. Oh! The big oh! for all these others. Well, some of them just went under, like Bob Cousy. Well, oh, clearly, he, he sounds like uh, a younger, uh, slightly younger uh, Don Imus. And well, slightly more coherent. Not much, just ever so slightly. Speaking of coherent, our good, close, personal buddy, the Mole Man, coming up next. we got the Mad Dog at four. The Marlins, anybody remember them? 6.30 pregame tonight. Bye, bye, bye! <laughs> 